On today's episode of the Mark Titus Show, hello, Twitter family. I have 10 MacBook Pros for sale, $600 each. On top of that, I will be signing every MacBook that is sold. I got hacked. I got, I got hacked. My Twitter got hacked. Um, I got hacked, TJ. This is the second time this has happened. I'll, I'll tell the story after, uh, I'll tell the story at the end of the show, but, uh, yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> I swear I'm not stupid and I swear I'm not old. Um, but I also know that like, I, this is a fight that I'm not going to win, but, uh, at the end of the show, I will, I will tell the story and hopefully if I can convince one person that I'm not washed up and that I need to be put out the pasture and like, I never, cause this is the second time this has happened. I've had my Twitter account hacked like twice and probably two years. Maybe it's less than that. Um, it's alarming. Uh, so yeah, that happened. And, uh, I'll talk about it at the end of the show, but I appreciate everybody reaching out, asking me if I'm aware that I've been hacked. Uh, I get more texts when I get hacked on Twitter than when it's like my birthday or something or like something I, I, <laughs> I could land on the moon and I would get fewer texts than I do when I get hacked on Twitter and everyone's just blowing me up. Like, bro, you got MacBooks for me? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, funny fucking joke, everybody. I'm a victim here, and you're making jokes to my face? Disgusting. Uh, we'll talk about that at the end of the show. First, uh, Rico Bosco is joining me uh, to talk about the Little League World Series. Yes, you heard that right. The Little League World Series starts on Wednesday. Uh, Rico and I um, have a weird history, but not really. It's not that. I mean, we talked about it at the, at the, at the, start, of the, uh, 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 the start of the episode, but we have a... Uh, we have a weird history insofar as uh, I I met Rico for the first time after trying to meet him like three different times, but he snubbed me. Um, and he snubbed me because, as he as he says on the show, I for good reason. I mean, I did take kind of a cheap shot at him when we talked about it, as you'll hear here in a second. But uh, yeah, we we did so like I never like when I decided I wanted to work at Barstool, he was absolutely like my first concern when I was like talking to Dave and Erica and Big Cat, um, and I was like. You know, I, I, I love everything. Um, I wasn't, it wasn't going to keep me from working here, but then when they would just say, do you have any concerns? My number one concern, TJ, <laughs> I swear to God, I was just like, is Rico going to try to kill me? Cause like, I feel like there's some sort of something with Rico. Like, I just don't, I can't quite figure out what it is. I don't know why he hates me. Like <laughs> the way he kind of seems to hate me makes me sort of hate him, but I don't really know why I hate him. I don't Anyway, fast forward to today. This man came on my show. I had so much fun. I, I could have done another three hours with him, TJ. We had we had a blast yeah. talking about eleven year olds playing baseball. <laughs> uh, no, Rico. Uh, when I was in New York, somehow this got brought up, like the Little League World Series, just the in general. I don't even know how it got brought. Just like the, someone might have just said those four words, and then Rico and I just bonded over it because uh, it's something that I've been into for a while. Because I, I've told this, I've told the story on my show before, but. Uh, my uh, a bunch of guys I went to high school with when we were of that age, they played in the League World Series. So I was like watching all these dudes I went to school with playing. Then it, that was fun, so I started watching it more. And then now as I've gotten older, I watch it because it's like the most insane sporting event on the in the world that kids are crying and they're throwing the ball all over the field. And you know, I, I maybe I'm sadistic, but like I just I, I find it to be captivating theater. I find it to be very interesting that you have no idea what the hell's going to happen next in a Little League baseball game. So I love watching the League World Series. Rico loves it for different reasons, which we will... Well, he loves it for the same reasons, but then that love has kind of turned into... It has manifested itself in a weird way, and now here we are. But anyway, I'm rambling too much. Uh, I will let... I will I will just play the interview, but uh, Rico came on to talk about the World Series. We talked a little college... Just a skosh of college basketball at the end. Uh, but it went well, and... Uh, don't let him nobody nobody tell him this but uh yeah I, I i would like to have him back on the show in the future so uh with that being said here is my conversation with the one the only rico bosco all right the little league world series starts on wednesday with uh panama population 4.3 million taking on uh a a a region that the little league is describing as europe slash africa which uh combine those populations that's two billion um, that's the first game of the Little League World Series. I have the preeminent Little League expert, uh, not just at Barstool Sports, but in, in the entire world, Rico Bosco joining me now. Rico, before we talk about uh, prepubescent boys playing baseball, um, we have to <laughs> we have to address the elephant in the room. Uh, before I got to Barstool, you and I were not necessarily fond of one another. Um, I think there might be a lot of people watching this there might be a lot of people listening to this that are surprised that this is happening at all rico 
Uh, where, where in your estimation does the beef stand between the two of us? So let's rehash. So you said we both weren't fond of each other. I don't know. I, I, I just, that was my read on. Wait, a, yeah, I don't know. Did I, did I? Whoops. <laughs> well, yeah. You think you just showed your hand, dude? Here's I, what I know, I, Rico. You, you snubbed me at the 2022 Final Four, and then you did the show with Marty and Jake, and you said that I snubbed you. That was, that was the only thing that really upset me. Was you said it, that I snubbed you, and 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 you snubbed me, sir. I'm getting past uh, taking every comment so literally, but I can tell you exactly where it's stemmed from. Because I did buy your book as well, which I've said to you. I did buy your book. Uh, used to read you. I think you influenced a lot of my, like, look at it a little bit closer with Dick Vitale. Do you remember that? Your rants yeah, of... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and he, I, I really lost it with him with the uh, Syracuse one. When he's like, you can't end the game like this. This is ridiculous. And Jay Billis goes, uh, Dick... Jim Beheim ran on the floor. What did you expect <laughs> yeah, him to yeah. do? You can't. No, Jay, you can't. It's like he's he's lost. Everybody makes the tournament. It's insane. So uh, we have a lot of similarities. Um, it was a throwaway comment, which mm -hmm. I think you made on your pod. Yep. Which was like, we got to get Jake out of there. We got to get Jake out of the circus. And I was kind of like, well, you know, you're judging the circus, but like you – do a couple of trapeze acts every once in a while because you're in the dungeon. I did. I, your friends here, so I'm like, well, what is he? You know, he wants out of the circus, but he's he's an elephant tamer. Like, so so what? Where does the line go? So again, that was me probably taking it too literally. Uh, and then yeah, we 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 cross paths there, and uh, yeah, I wasn't looking for any new friends. Let's put it that way. I wasn't <laughs> outwardly rude, but I definitely wasn't looking for like new friends. So uh, yeah, that's a you know. But I like I said it right away. I never really went over the top. I was like, this guy saw, I, I did respect you. And we were competing against each other at the time. I think you probably won that, true. that war in terms of the ratings uh, and you, the way history went. But we were competing at that time, you know? So, like, that's the way I looked at it. I took it very seriously. Uh, Benchmob was, like, my baby. Like, I was getting a lot of the guests, working on a lot. Like, we all cared about it. So, I was like, all right, we want to – anyone we're competing against, like, you know, I'm not going to necessarily roll out the red carpet. Uh, but no, I never really had a personal bad thing to say. But yeah, I, didn't, I wasn't looking for any new friends at the time. I, uh, I and it was I, off I, of again, it was off of a throwaway comment, which I took yeah. too seriously. It was a cheap shot. I'll admit it. It was a cheap shot. I was I uh, Dan was on our show, and I uh, in my defense, like the the the. the the content of yours that I was exposed to was like you throwing the can against the wall and then like every clip of you on pick em with, with Dave and Dan. And then like Jake, I would see Jake doing shows with you. And I was like, what are you doing to my darling Jake? I didn't realize that you knew college basketball at that level. You know what I mean? Like I, like as now you and I have talked to each other, like, you know, shit, you know, coaches, you know, player, like all now I respect you. But at the time I was like, what, who did they throw Jake with? That I shouldn't makes have sense. said, I shouldn't have, uh, you know, I should have done a little more research into like what I shouldn't have just like haphazardly thrown. I think the word I used might have been bozos, which is probably not fair. No, it so just I, was. It wasn't I, even I really a shot at us. It was circus. It was like we got to oh, get him in the circus. And I'm like, but this guy's in the circus. I'm but I like, have the circus. Yeah, you were. You were like, it was like, wait, he's part of the dozen. He's friends with all of us here. Like, what? Where? Where? Where's the? Well, I mean, if I remember right, you you went the Final Four show. Uh, I don't know if it was you or Marty or somebody on the show was like, uh, Titus and Tate are done. They they their their time is over. And I guess you were right, Rico. No, it wasn't like me. The show, the show, the show I, think, I, over. I think Marty said that, but no, I just looked more <laughs> of it as like competing. So Jake was like, I'm yeah. gonna go on the show. I was like, all right, it makes sense, I guess. But like, we're still kind of competing on it. So it was just different philosophies. Also, it was at the time of a person being a fucking mental case. So, yeah. you know, me, how it mental, is. you're talking about mental health, Mark. <laughs> I'm not talking. That was a cheap shot. That's one I seriously <laughs> regret. But I could and I could say that you uh, you did. You know, you brought awareness to that. I've, I've heard you speak about that. So it wasn't that's a, an open ended statement. It wasn't a cheap shot. It was somebody who talks about mental health. No, uh, we got uh, no. I, I once we actually talked, but I, I was I was worried when I got when I signed on a bar stall. You were the one guy I was worried about. I I, I came to New York and uh, I I don't know. I was trying to feel it out, but uh, we started. I don't. I think it was talking about the Lily World Series. I think that was my breakthrough. I think I think like finally when I was like. Well, no, I think you're forgetting uh, that Iowa Wisconsin stream when I walked over to you and gave you the all you you had the all time deer in the headlights look. Oh yeah, you don't remember that. I do remember, yeah. You had just signed on. I was like, "Hey, man, I was in a bad spot. Won't do it anymore." Like, that's you know, right. I, if you have, if you want nothing to do with me, we're all good. 
And you kind of, I remember you looking back at your phone like, that guy's nuttier than I fucking thought. So That's right, because gotta... that, yeah, that was the night, because uh, Dan had texted me earlier in that day. He's like, now that we hired you, we're going to fire Rico, so there's no, uh, yes, yes. There's no feud there. And I and then I texted him that night. I was like, you don't need to fire him, Dan. I, I think Just Rico's wait. All right. Yeah, wait another yeah, year. Wait. <laughs> that's nice of you. Yeah, it's nice. <laughs> Let's, so beef squash that's yeah the, exactly that's, yeah. It, was, it was the it was uh like see-through prosciutto bris, though it was not a thick beef let's it put it that way <laughs> it's not a 42 ounce ribeye like i said i bought your fucking book you should be thanking me if anything well a real subscriber no I, I obviously you know we know the game and that's really what it comes down to anybody who could talk basketball uh i'm obviously interested in you know so yeah uh, we'll talk basketball at some point on the show. I want to talk about the Lily World Series, though, because uh, finding another person in sports media other than, like, Carl Ravitch and Judy Foudy, or Julie Foudy, I'm sorry. Ju Julie, right? It's Julie Foudy. I think not so. Not Judy. Um, I miss the finding, days of Musburger. I miss the Yeah, Musburger. Musburger. Finding other people in sports media who love the Little League World Series, and I guess, like, maybe that's going to be my first question is, do you love the Little League World Series? But finding people that – uh, can talk about the Little League World Series is so funny to me because it's such a niche, uh, just obscure interest I have that every August I do find myself just park. I park my ass on the couch all day and watch these regionals. I watch all the Little League World Series games. I have strong opinions about like which Japanese teams were better through the years, which Hawaii teams are better through the years. And uh, one day in New York, I, don't, I forget how it even came up. I think uh, I, I don't know. Brandon mentioned something or something. Like, and then you and I, it was it was it was a stepbrother scene. Rico it was like, did we just become best friends? Because uh, I I know of nobody else who who cares about this shit. And then you cared about it. And um, I guess that's my first question though, because I mentioned on one of the shows not too long ago when I said we were going to set this up. That my love for Little League World Series, I wouldn't say it's pure, but it's like any other sport. It's like I just throw it on, and I think it's hilarious that like a, a team can be down eight to nothing going into the sixth inning and win because, you know, they're throwing the ball all over the. Field. I just find it fascinating. It's like, it's 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 incredible theater to me. Um, you have a little different <laughs> approach. I do, to, but to I do League. have. I heard what you said. Great impression, <laughs> by the way. I think like nine point two. I gave that. Um, but I said it is the last form of like amateur sports. This, mm -hmm. It really is the last form of true for amateur now. sports. For, for now. now. They'll, find, they'll find a way. But yeah. They'll definitely get NIL deals. But uh, it, yeah, that, to that point, that's what makes it so entertaining. Like you, you never – you could shut a, a Met game off in the eighth inning. Be like, all right, they're down Cubs game. They're down 7 nothing. All right, yeah, there's a chance they come back. But if I miss it, like, okay, whatever. You shut off literally, you're an idiot. There is yeah. no way it's ever out of it. The crazy <laughs> plays – the mental attitudes of the kids on the field. The kid he gives up a hit. He's crying. We got to manage that. Uh, the ball being thrown around. The crazy rules. Like uh, when you used to, we'll get to that, but when you used to have to manage the subs, like mm -hmm. when you would put guys in and you said you park your ass on the couch in August, brother, you're late to the party. When the thing <laughs> hits the advance in June, I'm looking for the local. Staten Island, all right, where are we going? It's a summer night. We're going to check it out. Now we got the state tournament. So I made sure I was in the outfield with a dog and a soda, which, by the way, now that your Twitter is, you don't answer them. But did you see? I was trying to bond with you, too. Did you see? I did, yeah. Rico and Rico. I was sending you guys tailgating. He's <laughs> really clear. No drinking, no smoking signs all over the complex. And this guy's got a baseball bat in his mouth with a cigar, and he's definitely tailgating with a cup. And they get Over the with a beer. It's, I'm like, Mark, you got to look at this. <laughs> Over the course of the last month, uh, every so often, I just get a DM from Rico on Twitter, and it's uh, just a video of him at a Little League game, at, like Staten Island or something, taking a yes. video. But I'm I, – I, 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 you, you hit the nail on the head. We, we were arguing with Brandon about this, that literally his, his stance is literally, ba you're, you're a sicko if you watch this. Like, what, a, what kind of weirdo would you have to be to watch all this stuff? Uh, I'm not going to pretend I think it's like the best baseball or anything like that. I think the theater is incredible. That's the way I would describe it. And for all the reasons you just said, is that every single game, like what, that's one of the reasons you watch sports is you don't know what's going to happen. There is no there is no sport on earth that you don't know what's going to happen more than Little League Baseball. You have no idea. Like no, the, I mean, the, it's, it's the same reason we like college sports to a degree. Right. Like you, I've heard you say it all the time. Like, what's better? Are you going to watch an NBA game on a Tuesday night or are you going to watch Purdue Northwestern? Well, I'm yeah. going to watch Purdue Northwestern because even though they're nerds at Northwestern, they've been parked out all day. And the, fan, the student section and the theater and, the you know, and like it matters more. Like it's – that's how it goes. So, yeah, it's – Brandon's – he just can't figure it out. He's like, they're all 14, they're cheating, this and that. They've been checking birth certificates 
forever. It's all legit. They all live in the same area. Like, relax. And when they don't, they they, they snuff it out and they punish yeah. them, you know? But um, back to your original point, I do have a, like, the fact that I'm so invested, I'm looking for the holes of it being pure. Like, so the umpires I have your, a big what's, gripe with. Yeah, what what is, what is, what is your number one crusade? Because I, that, that day that, uh, I feel like I kind of cr- cracked a door open where I was just like, you know, like Little League World Series got brought up. I mentioned to you that my hometown, the kids my age that I ended up going to high school with, uh, two of those age groups both played in the Little League World Series. That's kind of how I got into it. It was like guys I knew were playing in it. Um, and I like cracked a door open and you drove a fucking Mack truck through that with like, sit down and let me tell you about all the gripes I have. And I was, I was into it, but I couldn't keep, I couldn't keep up with you, Rico. So I mean, I there's wanted, so many, dude. I so what, pitched, like, what, what's the number one? Well, I, it's funny. You say guys you talk to, I pitched a, uh, like a, like a, um, oral history of the Danny Almonte type thing, because I went and tracked down a kid on Facebook from a Popka little league. And then my pitch was like the kids who <laughs> the headline was going to be the kids who saved the world <laughs> because they beat Almonte and they, they won the state. Now, the other thing is that's why I get so mad about the cheating. You're only 12 once mm-hmm. you take away this experience. So where it really came from was my brother got a job lifeguarding. Uh, with a friend of his. They're both lifeguards. We go back to their house. My brother's like, come pick me up at my buddy's house. I'm like, okay. They're standing in the kitchen. I'm waiting to, le- to, to leave. I'm going to drive him out. He looks at the fridge of a newspaper article and goes, that was fucking you? And the kid goes, what are you talking about? This team was so good against my brother that uh, they were going to mercy him. They pulled the kid whose house it was, J- uh, Joe, pull him off of first base, no practice swings, puts a helmet on, hits one 45 feet over my brother's head in center field. He was like, they're, they were loaded. My dad was like, they got the pitching. Like, they're really, really good. So I asked him that day, I go, how far did you get? He goes, Almonte. And what people don't know is that Danny Almonte not only was too old and took this kid's dream away, he also didn't live there. So, like, where are you from in India? Or it's Staten Island, New York, right? Yeah. Rico Bosco plays in uh, South Shore Little League, and I play for the Mets. And my team goes 9-7. and seven. And in late May, they select the All-Stars to start practicing. Right. Danny Almonte did not play at Ronnie Paulino Little League or whatever it was called. He did not play in the Bronx. He lived in the fucking Dominican Republic, and they shipped him up like two days before. Now, South Shore was protesting that. They weren't even protesting the age. So he was doubly illegal Double with cheating. That. Yeah, yeah, so that's when I was like, shit, like, you know, like, go into it. And then my dad's a really good umpire. He tried to get into that, and it was told, like, you got to – they're only going to select you for the regionals if you pay these fees. So – to answer your question, my number one gripe is the umpires. You got a sixty million dollar deal, and if you're gonna, and everybody's like, "Oh, they're volunteers," like, don't get crazy. Well, but the volunteers, the volunteers matter. I say it all the time in youth sports, like when you're refing. If the like, yeah, you're getting paid thirty dollars. I'm not gonna scream and yell at you, but like, if you can't run, you can't ref. Like, I don't expect you to. Yeah. You, you come into the office, you're like, "Hey, you know, I'm having trouble with my car." I'm like, "Ah, you know what? Give me fifty bucks. I'll go look at the muffler." And I don't know shit about a thing. I took your money. You gotta have some respect. Like you can't do the job, you can't it, do it. So they got to get better umps, and they it does take seem the money. Hypocrit- it's a money grab. Yeah, it does seem hypocritical to have uh, an organization that is that is signing television contracts and collecting tens of millions of dollars, but then at the same time uh, exalting the virtues of amateurism and saying that. Uh, and not only amateurism, it's more the volunteer aspect of it all. That like this, and and, and creating this like this this world where uh they, they they cannot be criticized because all these umpires are volunteers and they're just like local guys that you know are car mechanics and in their spare time they want to umpire literally games but to your point it's like well if if that is in fact the case why are you why are you cashing all these checks why are you putting this on television right. why are you uh you, you know what wh- how has this become a big business like pick a lane which one are you going to be are you going to be yeah, like the if- yeah. If you're going to just get volunteers up the street, that's perfectly fine. And all those people, I don't even have a problem with the umps. Like, I try not to go at the umps. I know the line gets crowded because I'm How like, many look at this. How TikToks have you made? Look at this How fucking asshole. But I, I always make the point. The ups and you're like, this fucking scumbag. <laughs> I'm going to cut his head off if I see him. You see the one? They couldn't count to three. Yeah. They couldn't count to three strikes, Mark. Like, the what funniest are we doing? part. The funniest part about you, Rico, with the Little League is that every single time you go on a rant, you are right. Every single time. And and for some reason, I mean, I'm just I'm calling a spade a spade. I, I think it's the subject matter and how unhinged you are that like it's it's a non starter from some people. Oh, without they, a like, doubt. They're like, they get a, click I on mean, a read Rico. the comments. Get a life. You're thirty six. What are you doing? They're twelve. They they're volunteers. 
I'd like to see you do it. I'm like, listen, you got every right to judge me. But again, if they were just volunteers off the street and that's how it was and yeah. pick out of a hat, like all good. But you're making sixty million and that deal so ended explain, in twenty thirteen. Explain again how, how how the umpire how the umpire so process the, works. So the yeah. way it works is that you uh you have at least on Staten Island, you have the island tournament, then you go to the cities, then you go to state, you win the state, you go to the regionals. To mm -hmm. get up to the state is all like organized. The state organizes the umpires, all volunteers. When you start getting to the regionals, if you want to advance out of the state and go to the regionals, you have to be selected uh, by the regional. But the only way you really get there, none of this is on paper, but it's all wink, wink. The only way you get to the regional is by signing up for their camps, their evaluation camps, or their clinics at two seventy five a pop. And I can tell you for a fact, I bet you there's zero percent of guys who go to their first camp and then get selected that year for the regional. Yeah. So they're banking them for two seventy five and then two seventy five again. And then from the regionals, the only way you get selected out of the regionals, do a couple of years of regionals, and then you go to Williamsport. So they don't have the best umps, they just have the ones with the deepest pockets. While their TV deal is $60 million. Actually, the TV deal that was $60 million ended in 2022. This one is so big, it's not publicized. <laughs> Again. You can't, you, how much is a flight? Like, how much is a <laughs> flight? And it's so easy. I laid out the process. Everyone's like, how would you fix it? You, everything's taped. I've watched everything. You saw, I was tweeting uh, the kid did a bat flip in, like, North Carolina in a regional tournament. I had, yeah. or not even a regional, sectional. I had that video, like every. I'm also in these face. I've acquired. You're asking like who would talk about? It? I found all the guys on the internet who know Little League. Like we got a little crew, you know, probably under federal investigation, but uh, of like why do you care? But we just love baseball. We love sports. That's all it is. It's nothing to see here. Uh, so they're like, how would you fix it? Everything's visualized. So the state tournaments, watch them. You get a week before right. you go to the regionals. Watch them and then send the best guys to the region. You're also talking about a guy from like Long Island going to Bristol, Connecticut. How much like a hotel for a week in Bristol, Connecticut? It's not necessarily backbreaking. You know, might not even a flight. You pay for his gas. And then yeah. all the regionals, you judge all those. And again, we have when did those end? Friday? Those guys are willing to go. Or, you know, maybe you do it off a year year prior. So 2022's performance gets you into 2023. And then you go from there. The best regionals, they get graded out, and they go. It's very simple. It's not backbreaking costs. Maybe you throw them like, I don't know, 1000 bucks for the week. These are guys who are willing to take off on a Wednesday at 4 o'clock to do a fucking regional game anyway. <laughs> They're not necessarily making $300,000. I think 1000 bucks might go a long way in a nice hotel room. Maybe You're stock not the mini bar. You, you, th this is how every uh, th my understanding is this is how every other sport works like this is how college basketball works is I mean whether as much as college basketball fans think that every ref is terrible and they're probably right like I think the the way that the NCAA goes about it is in their estimation they have some sort of rubric they have some sort of uh, system at play where they watch all the refs the best refs move on to like the next round you know and like you, you don't ref a final four in a national championship unless you're considered no, you by the NCAA. Yeah, everywhere you don't ref a super bowl yeah. without doing a play a couple of playoff games yeah, yeah for sure so you would think the little league would work the same way but you're telling telling everybody it doesn't work that way and that's that's a fair gripe that's what i mean it's a fair gripe it's just like i think when you click on a tiktok and it's rico bosco unhinged yelling about <laughs> little league umpires he couldn't count the it's three. a fight you can't win rico and I, i'm no, here I to can't. say i'm on your side i just like it, it's I, unfortunately I don't I don't know how we're gonna win this fight I don't know how we're no gonna chance. get people to <laughs> well I, yeah I mean they need a plan they need a commissioner like Steve Keener's gotta go he's gotta go <laughs> oh and uh, take a guess how much does Steve Keener make for his salary how much does he make uh four hundred and fifty thousand dollars a year <laughs> it's insane oh it's insane. my god sixty Just million four hundred fifty thousand it's nuts. So that's gripe number one. TJ told me, right. I think, Mount, Mount Rushmore's. Number two, yeah. this is the dumbest one, the rotary lineup. I think we're only going to get a year of this. All, batting yeah, this all 13 is, guys, come on. Yeah, this is, this is a new rule that they put in this year. So the old rule used to be that, uh, uh, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, but my understanding was that guys had to play. I think they've changed it a bunch, though. But like a when I was playing the leagues. Yeah, I remember it being as you have to either play one half inning in the field for three outs or you have to take one at bat. I think somewhere along the line, they said you have to do both, right? Yes. So I'll yeah. give you a great story about that. So a friend of mine's dad was an umpire for a long time, took a team 
to the Little League World Series. And he, if he was down in the, it would only work if he was the home team. If he yeah. was, uh, hold on a second. No, it would only work, I'm sorry, if he was the away team. So in the top of the sixth, he hadn't put his subs yet in. The rule in the beginning, like when I was playing, 98, 2001, it was three consecutive outs in the field or an at-bat. So what he would do if they were down and he tied the game in the top of the sixth, only then would he put in his subs <laughs> for the bottom of the sixth. So it was a lot of time. It's actually a good strategy when you think about it. Yeah. But those kids, a lot of those kids didn't play. Yeah. Now I think they made a rule <laughs> where, like, even if you did that, you can get, like, suspended for the next game because they want right. to make sure everybody plays. Then they switched it to three um, – consecutive outs ended at bat which is really difficult to juggle when you're 12 and now the new rule is by the way those guys like don't that's tough subbing in when are you gonna sub no i mean that was that was that was part of the appeal to me was that every, every little league team stereotypically no matter how good or bad you are uh you have one kid at least that has hit puberty before everyone certainly at the little league world series level because that's how you got to this point is you have a kid that's shaving um and and that's he probably is your pitcher and the guy that mashes all the home runs but inevitably, there's one kid on the team that doesn't necessarily stink. He's just like four foot seven, right? And he, he he's good at laying down. But he's probably the coach's son because the coach, not always. Like there's some coach's sons who are the guy who hit puberty. But like I, I, a lot of times the guy who's coaching the team, he's coaching it so he can put his son on the team. Well, <laughs> and his did son you watch stinks. Northern Cal Southern Cal that final? I did. Saying, yes, the kid from South Southern California. They didn't start him. He was supposed to be the best player in the whole tournament. And yeah. they played, he did the coach's son, and we're going to get robbed of seeing this kid. So there's always that uh, nepotism yeah. as it goes. But, but now figure, the rule is consecutive batters. All 12 or 13 have to bat, which is it's insanity. So stupid. There's 18 outs. 12 of them have to. So let me ask you this, strategy-wise. Where would you bet your, uh, bat your best player? I mean, you have to. I, I bat him first so he gets yeah, multiple at bats. It, like, it was, it was, word... When it first came around, it was like reinventing the wheel. Yeah, like guy, it was the first time they saw water. Guy was like, "Oh shit!" You know what? Now you have to bat the best kid first because you only get the eighteen outs, right? And they yeah, might they, get three at bats or four at bats. Like, get that kid up. There's no fucking around. That kid bats first in a pitcher's duel. That that kid, if if he he gets two at bats, he's getting two at bats in a baseball without game. a doubt. Yeah, it's crazy. And and the but the. The, 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 this was this was an appeal of it was to me was that you had to figure out what to do with the kid that's four foot seven and like where because even in the scenario that you said where uh, these kids like the coaches don't play them until you know you see what happens in the top of the sixth and maybe you come back and tie it now we go to the bottom of the sixth but even in that scenario like it's a risk it's a risk because now you got to throw your two kids out there that can't throw the ball and they're out they're out there playing in the outfield yeah <laughs> and, or uh, second base yeah or it's second like it's... you know. So it's it's fascinating. That's part of the, that's part of the game. That's what makes it fun. Is that there's no lead is safe now. All of a sudden, I, I hate this rule with the lineup deal. That like so it, again, explain to people because so this a might rotor, be going over people's heads rotary again. lineup is if you could get a waiver based on population that you didn't have to select twelve guys. Some teams, most teams take twelve. Some have thirteen in this day and age. And South Shore did it too. Shout out Pork Chop. If you took thirteen now, I think you're crazy. Yeah, crazy. Crazy. You're adding another guy in there. So there are some places in small populations that have 11, and they only have to bat the 11. But basically, it's like men's league softball. There is no, there's, you know, like OH, like everyone bats. So there's nine guys in the field, and 11 guys or 12 guys now bat all the way through. If you did that in your in house little league, and like, you know, nobody's making it to the bigs, and it's like, let's just kind of keep everything okay, and nobody's ever really good, I could see that. This is all stars. Like yeah. all of a sudden, we're gonna start letting everybody play. Like, you know, I, I don't know. They, they didn't do it at Ohio State. They didn't do it, you know, where I played. Like I had, a, you know, you get on the field based on your merit, and they're all stars. And the thing you're doing too is tricking the, like, not tricking the kids, but if you ask the kid to set the lineup, they, there's no bullshit with them. They're 12 years old. They yeah, exactly. Good. Like, hey, Mark, hey, Mark's a better hitter than me. He probably should start in center field, and he, you know, he's gonna lead off. And, like, I'll get my spot when I can. I'm, I'm confident in my abilities about coming in the fourth inning, maybe get a good at bat, lay down a bunt, make a nice play. Like, that's my contribution. Nobody can play 48 minutes on the floor in basketball all the time. Nobody can bat. Like, what are we doing? So, uh, 
like everything else with youth sports, it's the parents that are ruining it. Because you're exactly right that the kids themselves, if, if, if left their own devices, I think the kids would be like, yeah, I don't need to bat. Why don't we bat the kid that hit puberty as many they times as win. possible? They want to win. They also like, want to yeah, win. They all want to win. Yeah. And the <laughs> sacrifice that the parents have put, which probably leads to the next one of the gripes, the announcers belittling the competition. So they, they <laughs> these these kids, I, my mother did it with my brother. Like, you're juggling. When are we getting to practice? They never made it off the island, but if you make it off the island, all right, I got to get home. I'm, I'm not working overtime so I can get to Bristol for the weekend or – I need days off or I'm, I'm buying you a new bat, traveling, miles, hotels, add it up. Like, and the kids are giving up their summer. You know, they're not going to, to a social event. Like they're in twice a day. They're practicing. That's how it usually is. Mm -hmm. So like, don't belittle the competition. So these announcers, when a kid gives up a home run and they'd be like, oh, you know, crushing home run in a one, nothing win. They'll be like, oh, you know what? That's not that bad. They'll go back to the dorms and play ping pong and eat ice cream. <laughs> no, no, no. You don't get to fucking say how this kid cares about the game. He's crushed. Now, at 12, you have a way longer time frame to get over it. But in the moment, he's crushed, and he deserves that right to take it seriously. Don't belittle my fucking experience. Don't belittle their experience. They sacrificed their whole summer. It's the worst loss of their career in that moment. <laughs> bullshit i love like, it oh, they'll go back to the dorms what the fuck am i gonna do with the dorms i just lost i love i love this from you as well as uh i i don't know if i feel quite as I, I see both sides like the video of the kid that gives up the grand slam and then he's like high five and the guy that just hit the grand slam off of him that's the uh, worst going, i got that written down that I, kid is getting yeah, pulled get out I, of here I won't lie, Rika. Like, I hate it. I do. Like, if it was my kid, I feel like I would talk to him. I'd be like, listen, buddy, we don't have to high five guys when they humiliate us. Like, they that tell these kids to do yeah. it. They, without but a doubt, tell the kids to do that. I won't lie, Rico. Like, I, I have a soft spot for it. Like, when it, when I see it, I'm like, that's nice. You know? Like, that's nice. Yeah, but it's nice, but it shows me. It shows me you got see. a problem with the ticker. It shows me a little <laughs> weak in the knees. You, you don't have the, the killer instinct. <laughs> Those kids, those are the ones, and the ones who cry, like, you, don't cry. Be tough. As soon as you cry, my dad's big on that, too. Look at this fucking kid. He's like, here he's, we go, waterworks. So <laughs> like, you know. Do you, watch, do you watch this, or are you scouting? Like, are you? <laughs> I judge people's character. Like, I could tell you a winner by watching. Yeah, I'd scout a little bit. I could tell you. I can tell you, the, I can tell you like the makeup. You're... Sports is about makeup. We want to see who's tough. You're not wrong. I just like I, I think I, I have the exact same thoughts you do. I just ultimately my conclusion is just ultimately like frankly, I don't really give a shit what happens to these kids after this tournament. So like if this kid does not in fact have the dog in him, I don't care that much. So I just like, oh, that's nice, you know, that's nice. I don't love it. I would prefer they don't. Um right. but I think the the alternative is like I don't want kids like hitting home runs and then I mean they'll do the bat flip that's fine I guess but I don't want kids doing like this suck it crotch chop as they're running to first base at the <laughs> no pitch. Like, I, think I don't there we don't, should we be don't need to have a little yes. you know what I mean? there should be a line of sportsmanship that's what's yeah. weird too is that I am the big sportsmanship guy too like yeah. I don't want people hot dogging so they're like it's a fine line to walk it's a fine the line. Other yeah the other thing with the announcers too is listen it's two thirty on Wednesday in August the entire world is on vacation. I'm locked in watching the Great Lakes against the Midwest. You don't have to tell me that the mound is 60 feet and or the, the, ba the mound's 46 feet and the base is a 60 feet. Okay, guys, Carl, I've been here before. I'm watching it. You don't have to remind me all that. Stop with the ground rules. All the stop time. with the stop, stop. with the uh, can we stop with the uh, MLB equivalent bullshit yeah, too? Stop. Where they're just like this is the uh, a seventy five mile an hour fastball is like a major leaguer facing one hundred and twenty mile an hour. And I'm like no, it's which not. I still know. No, I still not. don't understand. I also still don't understand that. <laughs> my dad tried to explain. That's why I failed science. My dad tried to explain it like, <laughs> well, think about it this way. Like from this far, it's uh, I still don't get it to this day. We need John, you know what we need, Rico? We need John Brinkus from Sports Science to bring yeah, it down. Yeah, something like that's that. The only time, I, I that's the only time. That's the only time I understand. But like, um, dude, it's like, dude, think of know your audience. The only people watching this are tuned in. They're not coming across and need to know that it's forty six feet. Like, just you know, I don't know. Put a graphic up one. Stop telling us all that stuff and stop belittling the kids. That's where uh, I'm what, at with the announcers. What what annoys you more, uh, kids who have obviously been coached by their older brothers or their cousins or maybe sometimes their dads to uh, 
on their little factoids to say something that'll make them go viral when they're like, who's your favorite actor? And they're like, Johnny sins. And then, you know, the graphic puts it up and I don't um, know. That story is so crazy now that I don't even know <laughs> if that's real or not. It's one of those either, like the Ricky, the Ricky Henderson with John Ol Olerud. Have you heard that story? No. What's that? Oh my God. It's like folklore. So, uh, Ricky Henderson is in the, the clubhouse and he's like, yo man, what's with the helmet? And he's like, well, I had this like brain issue and if I get hit in the head, it's like uh, really bad. And, uh, you know, I have to wear this as like a precaution. He goes, oh, that's crazy. I played like a guy. With, I played with a guy like that in uh, Toronto. They were in New York in the Mets clubhouse. And he goes, yeah, Ricky, that was me. <laughs> and as it turns out, and it works because it's Ricky Henderson, just like with Ron Artest and like uh, Metal World. Oh, I'm, oh, I'm sorry, same guy. Uh, Rodman, you know, like maniacs. Yeah. So it yeah. works for Ricky Henderson. As it came out, Ricky ran with it because it's good for his image. You know, like, yeah. the, it's good to have that. But it, the story was completely fake. That's probably what out. this is. But even if, it, but even if it's not Johnny Sid, like, I, that was just the example that comes to mind. But uh, you know that these kids are saying, like, their, their favorite movie, and they'll say something outlandish that you know they haven't seen. Or even if they did see it, there's no way it's their favorite movie. Um, that kind of annoys. Like, it's kind of cool, but it's also, like... I, I unfortunately have spent too much. I'm too cynical. I see that shit and I'm like, this is not. This well, is not yeah, real. it's a lot. It's a lot of planning now too. Like, yeah, the, uh, they do the intros, and I remember the one where they were like, uh, "Yeah, my name's Mark, and I play center field, and everybody calls me, uh, I don't know, like rabbit." And the kids in the background are going like, "Hop, hop, hop!" Like it's yeah. it's very <laughs> orchestrated. <laughs> it's, too, it's too orchestrated. Like, very so what orchestrated. Annoys you, what annoys you more that when the kids are like not authentic. Or when the uh, coaches know that they are mic'd up and on camera when they come out and talk to the players at the mound and they try to because they're all trying to they're all trying to recreate who, who was it the Rhode Island guy was he from Rhode yeah. I or Massachusetts the he was Rhode Island guy. guy Rhode I Island think. who's made a career now he does the regional I think he might have stopped yeah yeah he, when he they called did the, the, ESPN. the TV. Yeah. Yeah. yeah but he had a career doing that the the New England region now but that was a I think that was organic that um, one was but then every every coach since then tries not everyone but there's a lot of them that it's like all right we get it buddy that you know you're on tv you know you're mic'd up there's definitely um, a few i think you could tell the ones that know what they're doing the utah guy the other day was great he comes yeah. out you know but they turn it up a little bit but listen it's they've also caught guys on a live mic cursing <laughs> or and, and kids cursing and shit so like I, I don't know maybe we do in that sense like we do need the hey i love you guys you know like Keep it a little PG. So that team also uh, from Staten Island. The kid, the famous clip, they, they come in the dugout. He's like, all right, let's go. We're going to get some rallies here. We got Mark, Joey, and TJ. Sounds like some runs. We need one run. The kid goes, one fucking run. Right yes, I, know, I see that one. That's so unbelievable. <laughs> unbelievable. So it's, you know, all timer. And then brought Musburger the next night has to go like, oh, we had an unfortunate clip on a live yeah. mic. Like It's like these are 12-year-olds. So it's, it's all time. Musburger is perfect. He was perfect for Little yeah. World Series. He was so good. Oh, he's yeah, he's the best. And then especially so the, the other one. Go ahead. The other one too. The, the last one on the Mount Rushmore that drives me nuts. And this works to the intros because I just did a TikTok on it the other day. Big Al didn't play. It's it says here honoring the greats who never made it or were greats. Big Al lost in the regionals to Mid Island Little League or South Shore. <laughs> one of the two. He lost to a team from Staten Island. He did not make the Little League World Series, yet he's on Kimmel and he's doing appearances and the, the history of where are they now, Little League World Series legend. I don't know. He didn't make the Little League World Series. It was like the equivalent of a conference tournament, and that team did not make the tournament. And the other one, it's not her fault because she was good, <laughs> but Monet Davis's team went 2-2, two and two, Mark. Okay, And in the second game, she had a stat line of three and a third or an inning and a third Gave up five hits and three runs. I have it here on my favorites. I'll get it for you. Give you the full. Uh, here we go. Monet Davis stat line. In the second game. And all you hear about in the first game, and don't get me wrong, she threw a no-hitter. She did throw a no-hitter to a team that lost. They were two and out. So they were the weakest in the field. But it's a no-hitter. It's a no-hitter. It was a no-hitter, hitter, but they were the weakest in the field. You're not wrong, but. They were the weakest in the no field. Hitter. She went two and a third. <laughs> took the loss. Six hits, three runs, three earned runs, one walk. She did strike out six. But that was a tough game, and they lost. And there was a lot of teams who go two and two, yet we're saying World Series great, all-time great. SP you know what's crazy? Uh, Parades, Mon statues, okay. movies. Come on. First of you all, Monet about, Davis. You know who Reese Roussel is? 
He Who's broke that? the hits broke the hits record two years ago. You'll never hear his name again. How about Gavin Weir? Didn't give up a hit in the whole fucking tournament. You'll never hear his name. Like, come on. It's, it's, How about it's, all the uh, the Taiwanese that had to go to like fucking slave camps in the seventies and eighties? Yeah, 80s I'm not touching they, that one with a ten foot pole. But it's, a lot of teams go two and two. The team went two and two. How about those, you know, and it makes sense. She's from Pennsylvania, Philly. They love mediocrity. They're fucking. They're statues of <laughs> fictional boxers. Special teams movies about Vince Papali. Like, come on. <laughs> Dude, uh, there, there's a there's a girl in Tennessee. Uh, yeah, she's Weaver's good. She's name. good. She's good. She's good. She's definitely good. But it's you she's know, really, like I was I was shocked to find out that Monet Davis wasn't even close to the first woman or girl. I guess I guess they're nah. Just, it's just too many years of. But teams. she was. I, I think the difference was she wasn't like a. She wasn't just like a token throw, and she was like actually. She threw a no hitter, Rico. I mean, cut, she it threw is a no hitter. She, th- she threw a no hitter to a team that went zero and two. So how much how much fanfare how much fanfare would have been okay? Because she you you have to admit that like a a, a girl throwing a no hitter in the League World Series deserves some fanfare. So definitely. The, but reminder: what, the the team went two and two. <laughs> the team she threw it against went zero oh and two. And in her next game, Mark again, okay, just in case you didn't hear it, two and a third, a loss, six hits, three runs, three earned runs. So reminder. <sighs> Oh my god! All right, all right. Can we talk about? Uh, let's just talk. Can we? Have you? You've been watching, obviously. This there's year. a 500 pitcher. That's not all time great. <laughs> I, I sorry. I uh, I wanted to. I told TJ I wanted to do a Mount Rushmore of all time Little League legends, and I was gonna draft Big Al, Monet. Yeah, I know. You, you, it just, it yeah, just, I just watched I, you slowly die. <laughs> I yeah, I caught on to a little of your uh, your gimmicks. Um, in the sense, when you did the New York, I went this motherfucker. <laughs> when you did New York Legends doing the St. John's game, oh yeah, during he the took John, Jimmer. Yeah, yeah. I go, oh, this kid, he yeah, he thinks outside the box. <laughs> and I try to do that. I did that with uh, snake drafts. They, that's why, like, with the snake drafts, like, uh, I, it was uh, best sequels, and I took World War Two. So you, you you do the you do the snake drafts with uh with the Chicago boys and, thinking and, outside the box yeah you got to think you outside get, the box do you, do you get killed for it like I did I've done one draft and I fucking killed it and everybody said I'm a bozo and I oh, I did the one back. with Dave I got killed in uh, yeah. he just dunked on me but um no I do okay in those I think yeah. you got to think outside the box it's fine you and I got to do one together I'm gonna talk to Eddie and, and we should we should both do one together and that way we can overpower the rest of the room when yes. they're when they're doing basic bitch picks and you and I are thinking outside the box we'll uh. We can, we'll we can make it work. Yeah. Um, let's talk about this year's field because they're w- w- you still can't gamble on this. That that's that's a crock of shit to me. I I we got to figure that out. Like how do we, or yeah. can we, or can we get why is Rico's like it's tough. Uh, Maybe we can. No, no, no. It, we're it's still, you know, great people at Penn and everything. So, but there was like a uh, yeah. Every time when Have we tried, did, did, put it this way, when we got the sports book. I said, "Wow, if we could get Williamsport one day, then we really, <laughs> we really got some value." Like I, I could retire. Put it that way. So it's uh, illegal, so, but don't touch it. Yeah, these aren't these aren't. We're not we're not offering gambling. Uh, right? Advice. No, we're it's just truth. If, I do love. I wouldn't gamble on it. I, like I would watch it regardless. So, yeah, the home runs are down thirty five percent compared to last year. Oh, you're do not they, in the Facebook page that gives the stats they, and stuff. Do they, Okay. Is this? Do you think this is just a natural thing, or do you think there's some uh, uh, fuckery going well, on? Do you think you're think about the, the one, balls? The, think about the one factor that definitely plays into effect. We just talked about it, the rotary lineup. Oh, that's true. Home yeah. runs are definitely down because of that. I also think there's a few the few stud pitchers out there. Uh, California has got a stud. Pennsylvania's got a stud. Nevada's got a stud. Ohio's got a stud. And Rhode Island's got a stud. So, like, when yep. you look at the bracket, the interesting the the game to me to watch is Nevada. Um, Rhode Island, and they're playing in to get to the eight. So how many teams are there actually? One, two, 20, three, right? four, five, ten, six, ten. seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, I'm gonna be honest. This might sound like a real like redneck thing, which I'm not. I don't really watch the uh, internationals till like the semis. I don't watch the I, regionals. I I'm a U. You know, born in the USA. I, I, I only watch the like American Bloods. I watch a handful of the internationals, so I think Curacao is going to win this. I want to get on record just really? in case I forget. I think Curacao is winning the whole tournament, so I will watch them. Uh, I'm basing this off of this is this little league, so it's not all the same guys, but uh, there might be some of the same guys. Um, so internationals were there last year, two years ago, so 2021. 
there were no international teams because they were, we were still like dealing with COVID or whatever else. Yeah. I don't know. They, they, they only did USA teams. Uh, 2020 was canceled. And 20, so 2019 was the last time. So basically what I'm saying is uh, you have to go back to 2019, but it's actually the last two international tournaments. Uh, this Curacao team lost in the uh, championship, lost in the L L Little League final. They lost the, the exact same Little League okay. that is from Curacao. Different kids. Different kids, yeah, but Age it's the out, same Little yeah. League, the same system. Um, and I was going through their roster, and, like, all these dudes are, like, 5'9 or taller. They're all, like they, – they, 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 they check that box where it's just a lineup of dudes that are, like – they don't have, like, the 6'2 guy. I like, I like one guy to be, like, 6'1", 6'2". Um, but they just they, – they feel like it's they, – they, they feel like they're just going to steamroll through the uh, – you know I'm disappointed with. Japan last year went 0-2 and, and got smoked by Canada – Japan usually Canada has a this team. year pulled the crazy upset. Uh, I think it's like British. Columbia, they were like smoking them. It was a, it's a huge upset in Canada. I think this Canada team is going to get waxed because they don't. Yeah, belong I think so there. too. They're, They're like the Saskatchewan. 16 and 14 Georgia team in 08 <laughs> that um, had to play two games in one day when the roof the tornado. Collapsed. Remember the tornado. that tornado? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Shout out Sunday out of Gaines, Malloy High School. Um, yeah. But yeah, they uh they remind me of that the Canada team. The so, great story is Tennessee. Are you Tennessee's familiar with the this? Story, yeah. This kid yeah. three three tournaments in a row. This guy has made this taking this team same little league. The manager mm -hmm. three tournaments in a row. So and Tennessee, they lost to get through. They had to make it through the losers bracket in that regional. Yeah, ten, I think ten, it, it, to me it's Tennessee and Curacao. Um, both of those teams lost to Hawaii last year. Hawaii was a fucking wagon last year. Wagon. Hawaii was an all time wagon. All time great uh Little League World Series. I think they were a year. wagon back in nineteen too. Oh yeah. Yeah. I could be wrong, but that was I'm pretty sure eighteen or nineteen a, a New York team, Staten Island team made I, it and I, got waxed. I think it was uh hold on, let me pull it up because I, I know what you're talking. I, I remember in 05 Hawaii had that was my favorite Little League World Series team ever, the 05 team from Hawaii. <laughs> and the fact that I actually have a favorite Little League World Series. I still team like the Beast of the East. But I'm Lee, uh, uh, Roussel was really good. Weir was really good. Those are recent kids. There was another kid. My dad was watching his uh, footwork. Zach Osborne from Tennessee. He ended up playing at the University of Tennessee. He was one of those mm. kids. You know how you feel the ground ball and lift up? He was good yeah. enough like a pro to stay down and toss it like Just, this. Oh, like yeah. He, I don't have the flexibility, but like he would field it and go like that. Like he was, yeah. he was good. He could tell. He, was, he had the instincts. Shortstop. Hawaii was 18. Honolulu won it last year. They were they were they were just fucking dominant last year. And then uh 2018 Hawaii won and then 008 and uh 05 they they also won. Um so how do you feel about but, the bracket in general in the sense that it's double elimination but it's really not but it's because not. of TV. And the same with the regionals. The team who loses once uh in the regionals, I'm pretty sure the final is like Win or go home. You don't have to lose twice in the double elimination. So it's they get away with it saying modified. Now, I'm not really going to, like, hammer them with this because the only way it could be on TV and in primetime and ABC a lot, a two-hour slot, is if it was modified. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. And you win. Like, there's a lot of advantages even if you get there not having to lose twice. You set up your pitching. You got days in between. Like, I get it. So I don't really – hammer them for the I was gonna say you still you still do get an advantage so you still advantage. have like a reason to win the game um but yeah it does feel weird to be a double elimination and uh you know would you lose you, one one game you in a heartbreaker be, would you want to be the home team or you would want to be the visitor um I would I would want to be the home team I think I feel like I think you want to be the home team because I think I think I want to put the pressure on them. what if you put a five spot up early because the pitch count then I could get you I, through I think, two I, I, I work under the assumption that Little League baseball games are not going to be pitcher's duels. So I, I think the pressure in Little League is always on the fielding team that has to throw the ball to first base. That has to, like, when a, when a guy, if, if, if you come up in the bottom of the six and you're down two runs and the first guy hits a double, the assholes get so tight. <laughs> Those yep. kids, like, they just start freaking the fuck out. And you see them looking into the crowds and mom's like, calm down. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. I think all the pressure gets on the uh, the fielding team and the pitching team. Now, if you have like a stud on the mound, obviously, that can shut shit down. It's a different story. But I'm working under the assumption that like, you know, if, if you're going to the U.S. championship, your stud has started the game. He's hit his pitch count limit. Now you're bringing in your second baseman to, to close the deal here. You're up two runs. 
I think the pressure's on the fielding team. So I, w- I would like to be the – and I would tell my guys, only swing at strikes. Yep. Like, make them throw it across the plate. Be patient. And then – if you put it in play, like I think that's that's the advantage. I think I think you have the advantage as the offense in Little League Baseball, whereas at the major league level, you don't necessarily have that. And that's one of the yeah. great differences of Little League. No, it makes sense. I also wrote this down too. Leave it to Little League. They do so many things that drive me nuts. So you you're obviously familiar with the the um the pitch count rule, right? Yep. Like you watch it for so many years. The dr- do you know well you can't lead and you can't steal what the announcers love to shove down your throat. Like it's like we get it. We get it. They can't steal. I watched it before, Carl. Relax. But they added now a drop strike three rule, I hate which that. is not guaranteed to add to your pitch count, but definitely opens the door to add to your pitch count. So if we're putting in a rule for pitch counts for safety and let's, you know, uh, health and safety and all that shit, we're going to add a rule that could potentially add to my pitch count and make a kid throw more. It's yeah. Bullshit. I, I hate, or, I hate or drop. make him hit more so, not make him throw more because 85 will be 85 either way, but more so not extend him further into the game. So if you throw 67 at the end of the fifth and you drop the strike and now it opens up more of that inning, now I'm starting the next inning with 75 and I got 80. Hold on a second. I would have been into the sixth and I might have right. got through the game. Like, right. that, you know, it's bull, It's It's total bullshit. I hate, I hate drop third strike in little league. I don't I don't You can't steal. It doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense. And it's it and it it opens the door for some schlub in like southern Indiana, some redneck coaching his little league team um to teach his boys like if you if you see breaking ball with two strikes, if you see a breaking ball in the dirt, just swing at it and run to first and make the you know, like that's not what we Definitely. want to teach the kids. Yeah, no, it, for it, sure. It, it opens up the door for bush league tactics and I, I we don't need that at the little league level. Yeah, we, we need fund. We need good fundamental baseball and good sportsmanship, Rico. That's I do like the see. strategy, though. There is, well, there's times where they're gonna walk a kid. I've seen this. They say they're coming out to uh, intentionally walk you, yeah. and when they throw the ball four feet outside, the kid swings, swings at a yeah. pitch. Yeah, that is gamesmanship. <laughs> yeah. That's gamesmanship. That's like not, you know, it's skewing the line of cheating. Like I'll the, never that's forget. The, like, that's like a fourth. Grade, no, go ahead. In fifth grade, my dad tells the story all the time. In a playoff game, there was a scrum for a loose ball, and they called a foul on the other team. We had one kid who was like our ninth man, and my best friend, who was our shooting guard, starting shooting guard, standing there. They called a foul, and he right away my dad goes, all right, Timmy, let's go, knock him down. The two kids didn't know any better. He sends our best. He knew the foul was on the ninth man. He sends our guy, hey, let the refs figure it out. That's gamesmanship. I don't mind you know? that. Uh, this, this, to me, feels like a uh... – it could be like the uh, the barking dog play, uh, uh, you know, like a third grade basketball where you teach the kid to get on his hand. Which, like, at the high school level, if the barking dog works, like, whatever, I don't care. Right. At th- at third grade, if you're a coach and you're like, all right, here's the or we used to, we used to uh, have coaches that would do this. We're coming out in the second half of like a first grade travel, you know, basketball situation. The coach would say everybody line up on the wrong side and try to trick the team into like remembering which side they're supposed to be defending. And then all the everyone would be on this side, it's and then one guy would take off running, and they throw it in and have a wide open layup. And it's like, I mean, come on, coach! Like you're, you're, you're it's gamesmanship. It's gamesmanship. <laughs> I also think we should get a little bit more gamesmanship. So I'm waiting for a team to do this. And none of the, none of this, enough of this shaking hands shit. We're competing for a world title. <laughs> Shake hands after the game. So I'm waiting for this. You're tagging up from third base, right? So I want to do it yeah. right. So like, so the home logo is the thaw here. So I'm, I'm yep. tagging up. I'm waiting for a kid to stand in front of me at third base. (laughs) Delay it a little bit. My dad taught it to us growing up. Hey, stand in front of the kid. He can't get a look out in right field. Got to look a little bit. Maybe he comes off early. It's worth it. That's gamesmanship. I want all that shit. I want all that shit with gamesmanship. You want it all. Yeah, I want that. That's gamesmanship. That's not, you know, kumbaya shit. So that's where I'm at. But yeah, so you don't like. Do, do they still make the kids? When I played little league, I remember we had to do the pledge before every game. Uh, like, yeah, they I, probably still make them do the pledge. I, I pledged. I pledged to give my yeah, all. Probably still. To, yeah. <laughs> probably would you get rid of that? You get rid of the pledge. If yeah. You run a little league. Yeah. Uh, really no, I would do it in the opening game, first game in the championship game. That's about it. Like, there's an opening ceremony. All the, get all the kids together, have them say it then, and then. Let's get on with the baseball. Exactly. Yeah. Let's compete. We're um, competing here. But the the Nevada Rhode Island region that first game's really good. 
Yeah. I think uh I think Maine's really weak. Washington's got Maine. Uh Tennessee, I'm kind of rooting for that story. Um South Dakota, I'll be honest, I don't know too much about. Fargo, Southern, first, first Southern South Southern Dakota Ca- team ever. First, first South, South Dakota, Dakota team, team ever. ever. So, yeah. like, yeah. population is probably not the best. But they got a decent little draw. Pe- uh, Pennsylvania's got a great pitcher. Texas has a great yep. pitcher. That, I think they lose that game. South Dakota goes to the loser's bracket. Southern Cal's loaded. Ohio's got a pitcher. You're going to see a lot of, like, it really comes down to your depth. So, like, can you win this game with the stud going against the stud but yep. then it's way more important in the second one. Like, same thing with Nevada, Rhode Island. That's going to be a war just to get out of there, and now you're in the quarters with your two, and Tennessee's got the one. You know, like, I've seen this play I, out so many different ways. They used to have – and it was that's what makes the, uh, Todd Frazier, his team, was so much better. There was four regions in the whole – That's United right, States. yeah. That's so right. The East was everything north of, like, I don't know, Virginia, the, like yeah. South Carolina, like everything was up or, you know, Delaware is, is more, but you had all those teams. Now it's divided into like three different regions. It's way harder to get there. And they used to do round robin and then you play out, but yep. now it's modified double. So yeah, it's tough. It's, you got to have three to four kids who can pitch. You really do. You got to have a bunch that can go. They all, got, that's the thing with coaching. They all should be able to go. You're an all-star. You should be able to give me an inning. Give me an inning. You're an all-star. Give me an inning. That's a, that's a, that's actually, I, can't you like figure out like four people that can pitch and then just do one inning a piece? Yeah, that seems that seems like a good strategy. Well, no, I just meant do more one. so like an inning in a spot. I still think you should yeah. have your starter go like four or as five as into a game, you know. But yeah, you're right. You should at any point you should be able to bring a kid in and pitch and give you an inning. I'm handicapping it this way. Here's how I see it. Uh, I think the favorites, and we're talking about just the U.S., uh, Tennessee is the favorite to me. Um, this third straight trip for Nolansville, this little league. Uh, they lost to Hawaii last year in the U.S. title, uh, but as we said, Hawaii is like one of the all-time great teams yep. last year. So, like, this is a good this is a good little league. I think they do have some of the guys from last year are back now. They got studs across the line and then the the, the girl Stella Weaver is like actually really fucking good she can I can't pitch, wait to, yeah, she definitely can pitch I can't wait to do a show with you next year where you explain to everybody that she's actually not that good um and <laughs> she well I, if she, if her team goes two and she, two she better get a statue and a movie built around her because she, she's like everybody else so um I think Washington's the dark I think Washington can beat Tennessee Washington 33 and one in their regional Rico combined they, yeah. they scored 33 runs they gave up one run Washington, they they just crushed everybody. And I think I, Maine's I get it. weak like, too. I think Maine's weak. Maine's yeah. Um, but you got to respect Southern Cal. You got to respect the West Region champion every single year. Whoever oh, it is, that's the the West is the, the West is just like you just pencil it in. You're just like who? It's like a it's like back in the day the ACC champ. You know, it's like whoever wins the ACC. You're like all right. Well, they're probably going to the Final Four. Um, that's how I feel about Southern California. Also, El Segundo. That's my hometown boys. I used to live right by El Segundo, so like I feel some sort of connection to these boys as well. So Where is that? Washington? El-, El Segundo, California. LA. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, right there by the airport. West. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. Um that would I think that actually if I had kids at the place I lived in LA, Rico, I think they would have played at El Segundo Little they League. So would have played there. Yeah, so, I'm hearing yeah, some these stuff are my guys. there's like the Oklahoma Little Leagues. And stuff is is a little shady. There's no little leagues in Oklahoma. They just have a tryout for Tulsa. And they all put them in Tulsa. I'm hearing some things I don't I don't necessarily like, but I know these are all legit little leagues. We hope so. Um, I like Pennsylvania. I like Texas. I don't I don't think they're gonna win it, but they could. Uh, but I'm trying to think of what else. I got Curacao to win it. I think Curacao is. Yeah, I haven't is, watched any of them. Yeah, I think Curacao is gonna win the. Uh, I I don't know. I, I Japan is is the one team that can year in and year out beat you know anybody but like last year they sucked and i think japan's down right now so i'm not well, we'll so what do you think we'll about see. this in terms of cancel culture and everybody kind of coming at us what do you think about oh, the boy. fact that the, oh, U- <laughs> that the u.s gets to play oh, all of them in lomedy which is the good one yeah and the what's the other one i used to know the name uh volunteer stadium right they play all in volunteer yeah. so what do we think about the fact that the u.s kids get the I best think- stadium <laughs> For what it's worth, I've been to Williamsport. Uh, Volunteer is newer, so you could argue that it's nicer. You know what okay. I mean? Like it's like like Lomity has the history, but Volunteer was was newer, and it feels the exact same. Uh, I I think I think you give I think you just play the uh, the Hoosiers clip, of Coach Dale measuring the, the the rims and everything, and you're like it's the same dimensions, it's the same field. And tell him to shut sense. up. That's what yeah. I say. It's, yeah, it's my media field. credentials were denied. 
this year. <laughs> I don't know why. I can't figure it out. But uh, media credentials denied. So another year of waiting it out for uh, Big Stevie. Get some answers. <laughs> See where he's coming from. We did an hour. We've done an hour Little League World Series preview. And the yeah, it's, it's, this, is, ripping. <laughs> this is, just should be investigated. I'm, you're, you're an educated, smart guy, but like – I guess it goes full circle. What are you doing with these? We got to we got to rescue you, man. You got to you know, got to get him out of the circus. What are you doing, dude? You're right back in the circus. I am right back in the circus. I was supposed to get Jake out of the circus and Exactly. Instead, nope. I've been pulled into the circus. You secretly um, wanted to be in you the don't, circus. But everybody everybody's full of shit cuz there're going to be a lot of people that will listen to this, watch this and they're like, "I can't believe you guys talked about the fucking Little League World Series." You all are you all are hypocrites. You're going to watch. Bro, everyone interacts watch. with all the stuff I put up. Like it's Everybody it, loves it. Like, what else are you going to watch? Anyway? I put like, the tweet out time. every time in, like, early June. I'm like, hey, if you know of anybody, because I'm only locked in a stand on. If you know of anybody making some noise, let me know. And here come yeah. the DMs. Medina, Ohio. This place, yep. uh, Media, Pennsylvania. They're they're te- they're like, hey, look at this guy. This guy's going. Everybody's watching. They know they're little kids. They're making buzz in the uh, in the neighborhoods. So, did, who, yeah. did you pick a winner? Pick a winner for everybody. Uh for the storyline, well, you said they're the favorites, so now I can't pick them with Tennessee. I'm kind of rooting for Tennessee. I think that'd be a good end for that guy. I think you could. You, can you know what? Tennessee. Since you I like Tennessee. Utah so much, I'm going to take Nevada, and that kid could really, really deal. So I thought that Utah team was str- was strong. I think Nevada can get through Rhode Island in a tough one, uh, and then they'll get Tennessee. So we'll see. Oh uh, yeah, I'm re- I guess Nevada and then Southern Cal would probably be the other one to watch. Uh, I think Maine goes out 0-2. Probably be a safe one. Yeah. Ohio, I think Ohio's I'm, not I'm necessarily my great. Boys. They got a good pitcher, but yeah, my boy, that that's a uh, Columbus suburb, Ohio. Yep. That's a uh, New Albany. Um, I'll probably be rooting for them, but I don't think they're gonna. Yeah, it sucks. The Massapequa team, I could have got behind a little bit. We thought South Shore would have yeah. got there. Pork chop, all those guys. So, um, I wanted to talk college basketball with you, but uh, we uh, we'll do that. Yeah, we spent an hour on the Little League World Series. I can just give <laughs> we'll you the final four. Else. You want the final four? Yeah, hit me with it. All right, Bama. Arkansas State, Utah State, Bryant. Don't do this. Don't do this. Why not? I believe in people. We, we, You've seen we, their coaches. So many- they have four great coaches. You even know the coach Arkansas strides. State? You big, you big star. You even know the coach Arkansas State? Don't do Who's this. Who's the coach Arkansas State? Don't do this. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Shoes on the other foot now. Don't come Utah on my State. show. <laughs> I stay strapped. I stay strapped to my guy. Um, what's your? Oh, I, I was gonna hit. We'll, we'll we'll do this basketball. This this, this and then we'll, we'll we got to get out of here. I, the, the circus is pulling me down. I gotta. I gotta Conference get realignment is horrific. Is that where you're um, going with this? No. What what's your? Uh, now that now that the beef is squashed and and I, I don't want to go. Should I? Can I? Can I say I'm a writer? I don't really know. I don't know how. It yeah, works. yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, usually like people give a token or so like second chair you think about co-host what do you like what's yeah maybe the... i don't know but like I, I feel like i feel like it might be a little premature to call it like even, i feel like even blink at that one tj you didn't even blink at that one. <laughs> that's good you're a good sport uh no go ahead uh no i was just, just gonna say i feel like uh it might be i i don't want to i don't want to you know rush this relationship or i don't want to i don't want to call myself a rider too soon you know i want to we're, we're making some nice baby steps here you know making some progress i don't want to just jump into bed with you immediately um, I'm passionate. I think you respect that at least. Like, yeah, my, I do. I do. Even my lunacy comes from passion. You're, you're, yeah, you're a lunatic, but like you, you, I, I, I gained a ton of respect for you when I realized like you actually. I just thought you were just like a slapdick that was just screaming about college basketball, and you're no, not. You're I, a I would be, who's, yeah, who screamed about college basketball, who knows some stuff, right? And that's a that's a, <laughs> that's a difference. It, yeah, um, a little bit of a difference, yeah. But uh, if if I'm gonna if I'm gonna be on on your side, I need to know. Uh, I need to be able to navigate the 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 other beefs you have in the college basketball in the world of basketball space. And I, for the longest time, I thought that you had a beef with Woj, who I I am the number one certified Woj hater. But then at oh, the Big East tournament, you? oh yeah, oh yeah, well, oh, yeah. it wasn't really a squash. It's just like I needed to confront him. All right, so the backstory is 2011, December 23rd, Wagner beats Pitt at Pitt. Danny Hurley. All-time rising star. Everyone knows it. From St. Benedict's to when he gets the job at Wagner. The whole world knows he's got his sights set on better places. Which I can assume everyone is okay with because he's not going to stay at Wagner for his entire career. Like Mm -hmm. You have to be a moron to think that. 
So however it came up, I'm tweeting, great win for Wagner. Danny Hurley just sealed his, and I'm a nobody on Twitter. This is before even anything with Barstool. This is like 2011. So I'm like, Danny Hurley just cashed his ticket. He's gone. Woj gets in the thread and then DMs me and goes, I know him really well. Turned down a lot of jobs. He's not leaving. I'm right. Okay. <laughs> that summer goes to Rhode Island. I know where the body. Hey, Roach, you were dead wrong, buddy. He left. So then it became a bit like then he went to UConn and it got more traction. So I'm like, oh, he uh, he didn't leave. Like you said, he was leaving. You said he was leaving. He didn't leave. So like, just just say you were wrong. That's all you had to do. After he won't 10 do years. It. He blocked me. I've heard he's at golf games. He knows who I am. Uh, and right away, you can see it in the video. He does look like, oh, God, this guy's a psycho. But he goes, oh, yeah, yeah, Rico, Danny Hurley. I'm like, just, you know, he left. I was like, I need you to issue an apology. I'm not going to do that. I was like, you got to say you're wrong. Now, okay, so, yeah, you were. He, he didn't say he was wrong. He said you were right. I'll take that. But he was dead wrong. But so so me being a woe shader, it doesn't, that's not, that's not going to be a problem for you? No, he's the worst. Okay, like good. I buried it yeah. in the sense I just got him to say he's yeah, wrong. Yeah, yeah. Okay. It's like a lunacy take. I hate Calipari. Heard another good tidbit. Uh, <laughs> Kenny Smith's book. Go check it out. Um, read that on uh, vacation in a couple of days. Really, really good book. He tells his story. He's with the Nets, and he's like late in his career, so they don't know if he's going to make the cut. And Calipari was on the phone with not Fratello, somebody else. Who was the Brian Rice? Does that sound? F who was a guy who was a coach of uh, San Antonio? That looks like Brian Dutcher. Maybe I'm mixing oh, all yeah, the names yeah, yeah. up. The Brian Snow? Does that make sense? No. Whatever it was. Whoever the guy was. Brian Hill. Brian Hill. That's who it is. Yeah. Okay. He's on the phone. Cal Perry's on the phone with Brian Hill. And the, the TNT job is up for either Kenny Smith or Brian Hill. And Kenny's talking to his agent. And he's like, ah, you know, I think I'm going to ride it out. I'm going to try and make the nets. Jason Williams comes running into the locker room and goes, where's Kenny? Where's Kenny? And he goes, yo, man, you got to take that TNT job. I just heard Calipari on the phone saying he's only going to keep you around through training camp and then cut you so TNT takes Brian Hill. <laughs> this is Calipari, the same guy who violated HIPAA laws in the 1980s when he said Luke Karnasek had cancer, which he did not. Luke Karnasek is very much alive so that he could get a recruit. So Calipari, but that no one, that one, that one, I don't have a problem. That's just old Big East basketball. That's just yeah. old Big East. That's just like, that's gamesmanship, Rico. You just said uh, you like gamesmanship. You said the guy <laughs> was dying. Come on, it's HIPAA laws. <laughs> uh, all right, so the other one I was going to ask you about is Rostein. Yeah, uh, I just. You, you can be honest. You can be honest. You can be honest. That's I didn't like, I mean, show. he just kind of kept going. He just kind of kept going with it. I'm like, John, I know what you're trying to do. Going with like, what? What's going, like, to explain he, what's going on. You know, like, he did the, he's, he's got the, 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 um, he's got the catchphrases for everybody, and he made mine, like, definitely a, a hater one. He's like, gum on your shoe. It's like, all right, John, like, you tweet about the A10. You're like, you know, I did some stuff in my past life that I don't think you could ever do. It is what it is. Oh, no. But you also, you're one of those guys who has no real opinions. He's just going to say how great everybody is. And he never took a jumper in his life. So, like, I've said it, too. If he wants to play one-on-one, -on -one, I'll drop anything he wants to do. A thousand bucks, whatever. Delete your Twitter accounts, quit your job, anything. He's never taken a jumper in his life. I lose all respect for guys who haven't taken a jumper in their life. But at least he's but open yeah, about he, it. Do, do, do you get respect? Like, he'll, he'll, he'll admit it. He's not trying to hide it. He's not trying to convince everybody that he hooped, and he'll, he'll straight up say, yeah, I asked him how much he came And that up. doesn't knock for you out of the equation. Like, I, I think you could be a nerd and still like college basketball, yeah. but, like, he, he just doesn't say anything. He doesn't say anything. <laughs> and then a lot of these kids, now that I'm getting relationships with them, the minute they leave school, well, they're, they're on the fence of when the season ends, and it's on the fence of are they going to declare, or are they going to go back to school? He's texting them every day. Same yeah. copy and paste message. It's like, that's a, like it's, I'll it's be tough honest, I, 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 it's going to sound the Cooper flag thing that he reclassed. I knew about that a week ago. It's just, I'm not in the news scoop business and he won't give you credit on certain things. The Bama game I got b being a friend of those programs. And like, so I took a shot knowing it would piss him off. But then even then he's like, well, you know, I got it from the SID and then he just, so he don't, he doesn't, he wants to play the game of trying to get the news. And then when you beat him to it, he's not going to acknowledge you. It's like we're done. All right, I, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta patch this relationship, John. Because I, I, Rigo, I hate scoops, guys. That's like part of why I hate Woj uh, so much. Um, but John is the one guy I make an exception for because he's so. I don't know. I, I, I just know him well enough that like I know that he's he's. 
I, I don't know. Yeah, I got a soft spot for John. Um, but yeah, I, mean, I also, I also understand little, your point like, of view. So I, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta mend the, I gotta mend this relationship somehow. But I don't. We, we got time. We'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. Yeah. We'll get dinner. He thinks so I'm nuts. I'll come to New York and he I definitely know, thinks he, I'm nuts. Well, that's the reason I brought it up because like every time I talk to him, he's like, "How's bar still going?" I'm like, "I love it." And he's like, "Rico, is he? Is he? Is he?" Has he calmed down at all? And I'm like, John, I'm like, John, how much time you got? <laughs> yeah, no, we had some angry texts for sure. I don't know if he told you about those, but yeah, it's, you know, he does shit too. It's 4th of July. You're making like the gum jokes. Like, buddy, go have a fucking high noon on the beach. Like, come on. I know. I know. I, know. I we'll think he leans John. a little too much. Yeah, it is what it is. I know he's your pal. We'll end on a high note. No, I, I I've told John this because every time I, I I every like four months on this show I go on I go on a rant about scoops guys and how it's a scummy industry and I hate them all, and then I always follow up like this long rant with like, but John I love you if you're if John if you're watching this right I, I'm not talking about you, um, and then he'll call me and he'll be like, bro I saw the I saw the rant of the week you know um. And then I'll just like kind of talk myself around it where I'm like, John, I wasn't talking about you. So I've told him many times over, it's a it's a love the center but hate the sin type situation with John. So like I understand. It's just like I unfortunately I I know him too well. And he's given me the only two scoops I've ever got in my life, Rico, are number one, that John Rostein was engaged to be married, and number two, that John Rostein's wife was pregnant with child. And <laughs> he gave me those two scoops. Um and she's supposed to have the baby soon, by the way. I should. I need to be in that delivery room. I think I need that scoop. That's my third scoop. Yeah, I got three Rusty well. scoops. <laughs> you might need that. Yeah. Anyway, um, this was good. This was good. The second TJ. How did the uh, second chair tryout go? Uh, did, we, did we record any of this, or is this just for internal <laughs> use? No. Yeah, we were gonna record with somebody else later. I think. Okay. Yeah. All right. So get get Jake in now, and we'll see how that <laughs> yeah, goes. Yeah. And uh, yeah, appreciate Imagine y'all. It's, that would be first off. It's the Twitter gets. Uh, hacked right when you're supposed to be promoing you know it's all right you're a grudge guy too like it's okay you 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 remember facts you're a grudge guy i got it i respect it i deserved it i got it you don't want to promo the episode you got hacked it's all good i got it mark i know how it works i can't i can't i can't promo but if you do need a macbook for 600 dollars, yeah. hit me up okay I'll, uh, i might i got i got some I might. for you uh, this was fun, Riga. You'll be it back was. on the show. You 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 passed the audition. Um, this was I can't believe. You know, I I I do think the beef is officially squashed. So it was let never. It, be known. it was it was again. It was a throwaway comment taken a little too seriously. Um, yeah. But and also like giving a fuck about how much I cared about basketball. You know what I mean? Like I respect you enough that you guys yeah. were the standard in that industry. I know where you came from. Grew up listening to Bill Simmons, reading Bill Simmons. Like used to read your columns. I just love basketball. So it's it's better to be friends with you than not in all, seri- in, in all seriousness in this office you're one of the better basketball minds probably in the all best. seriousness this I'm, I'm being earnest here when i when i learned that about you i did kind of like undo and feel bad at, you know like i kind of was like oh because I, I i did i just thought you were just yeah like and it's, it's giving people the benefit of the doubt like you yeah. didn't know it so again i fly off the handle like how could he not it's like well he's doing his own thing you know he's in california surfing watching fucking i thought i didn't even i didn't even know you had an interest in basketball i thought that like jake i thought they wanted to give jake a show and they were like we need jake needs a co-host so they just like spun the wheel on the yak and you know like you you and mark it landed on you and marty and you guys both got like a prison sentence where you had to go do a show with jake and that's why i was like man can we free jake and like give him some fair enough s- something and then and then i got to know you and i was like all right well yeah when you come maybe when, if i get you know if i get out there in a couple months or tape and pick him or something i'll show you my folder of uh of baseline out of bounds of inspirational <laughs> quotes um talk to you a little philosophy yeah man i, I we'll do we'll in- do a show we'll do we'll, we'll we'll do a little experiment uh what's more niche uh the little league world series or baseline out of bounds plays with Rico. Like we'll do an hour on just like blob plays, you know, and see. <laughs> yeah, no, I want to pick your time. brain because down the road, I want to know which one, like these guys have 60. I've seen a hundred in my head. How do I know in a minute to convey what I want to do, especially to yeah. like a 10 and under team in the peach jam, which <laughs> there's a spot on my staff. If you want in, <laughs> I think next year we try to get that content. You blew me off for Williamsport. I know you're probably going to go to Maui. And, you know, and blow me off there. So maybe third time's a charm. We get a little EYBL. We get some sweatsuits. 
you know, Listen, down the road. The first day, the first day went well. <laughs> yeah, exactly. There will be a second day, Rico. Guy. Let's just not I can't get this not, guy to commit to nothing. I'm, I'm, I'm nice. way too classy to jump into bed with you this soon, but I do appreciate the Fair first enough. day. You were a gentleman. I appreciate you buying me dinner. Um, Fair enough. We will we will talk and we will set up a second date soon. How about Fair that? enough. I appreciate All it. Right. Hopefully, it's in Thanks. Georgia. Thanks, dude. Uh, thanks, dude. That was fun. Absolutely, yeah. No, you're the man. All right, thank you to Rico. Uh, riveting conversation. Thank you, Rico. <laughs> now I want to talk about my friends at Coors Light. Everyone thinks about the day they'll eventually get to retire and enjoy all the freedom that comes with it. But who says we have to wait decades before we get a kickback and chill out? Take advantage of that free will and spend the summer chilling like a retiree and pair those moments with Coors Light, the beer that's made to chill. Enjoy your temporary retirement era with Coors Light. It is the beer that is made to chill. It pairs well with retired state of mind. Here's an example of retired state of mind. Your boy, at long last, I've been back in the Midwest for a month. At long last, I got out on the pontoon on the lake. Uh, it was not Lake Michigan, but it was a lake in Michigan. Um, this past weekend, got out on the pontoon, throwing back the Coors Lights, and you just say to yourself, "Why? Why am I driving back? To, why am I going back to work on Monday? Why don't I just stay here? Why? What if I just look at my bank account and I crunch the numbers and I figure out how many Coors Lights I could buy, throw on this pontoon, and just live the rest of my days on this pontoon right here, drinking Coors Lights because this is heaven, and it does not get any better than this." That is what I mean by the Coors Light retired state of mind. This summer, chill like you're retired with Coors Light. Get Coors Light delivered straight to your door with Drizzly or Instacart by going to CoorsLight.com slash Titus. Celebrate responsibly. Coors Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado. All right. Thank you to Rico. Um, that, went, that went well. Unfortunately, as he said, I will not be able to promote this uh, episode of the show on Twitter. So, um, you know, that sucks for him that uh, – that, that uh, yeah somehow he's the victim tj i don't know if you caught that like i i'm the one who was hacked i have my twitter account hacked and rico is the victim in all of this because i will not promote him being on my show <laughs> it's a witch hunt against him it's a witch hunt against him yeah i purposely had my account hacked so i gotta tell the story real quick because uh i don't know i i actually don't know this to be true but i imagine i'm getting killed uh, i i don't i i i can't see so i don't really know but uh I, I'm just basing it off of the text that people are sending me, which is just a lot of crying, laughing emojis and screenshots of my Twitter account. Yeah. Um, uh, my so-called friends are just, you know, dunking all over me. One guy, one guy texted me. This is the most hacked I've ever seen anybody be. Like this is like, like this was like, like there's a severity to the hacking. And he's like, this is a ten out of ten hack job. You've been hacked, <laughs> sir. We've never seen hacking of this level. Yeah, <laughs> he's, he's been super hacked. He's been super hacked. Um, so uh, for those who don't know, I, I told the story the last time I was hacked on Twitter, which was not that long ago. You can go dig it up in the Titus and Tate archives. Uh, I told the story on that show when it happened. Um. I, the first time I got hacked on Twitter, it was really funny because I the guy who hacked me then used my account to hack Rothstein, and Rothstein calls me in a panic, and he's like, why did you do this to me? And I was like, John, that wasn't me. I had my account hacked, and he couldn't really understand what I was saying, <laughs> and he kept yelling at me, and he's like, why why would you send me that DM? And I was like, John, that wasn't me. It was someone else. Someone hacked my account, and he's like, no, no, no. It says it's you. It says it's you right here. Um the first time it happened, uh, Kyle Guy, 2019 uh, Most Outstanding Player, National Champion, Mr. B former uh, Indiana Mr. Basketball, a guy I've known for, for a while. Uh, I, was, I, w I wanted Kyle Guy to come on my show. I was like kicking the tires on uh, – I've had him on the show before, but I was, it, was, it was just like that time of year where it was like – it was probably – it was the offseason. Maybe this was like two offseasons ago, whatever. But I, I, I was like, you know what? We should have Kyle Guy on the show in the next week or two or three or whatever. Um, and I'm just throwing that around in my brain. When would it make sense for Kyle to Guy to, to come on the show? And I get a DM on Twitter from Kyle Guy. And Kyle Guy's like, what's up, bro? And I said, what's up, man? You know, as you do. And then he's like, not much. What's up, bro? And we did this back and forth for <laughs> – for 10 dms just like how's the fam good how's the fam good uh saying a whole lot of nothing but like i was conversing with this man it was kyle guy's account he had the blue check uh it was you know all of this was good and then i i just was like man next time i'm in indy we gotta we gotta link up and he's like yeah we should do that you know all this sort of thing um and then he's like hey man can you help me out uh, my buddy is is just started this shoe company and he wants to sell shoes now under under any other circumstance, TJ, I would have said, yeah, man, send the info over. I'll take a look. I would have not looked at it and I would have just like let it be, you know, 
But I was primed in that moment where I was like, I want, I'm, I'm about to ask this man for a favor because I want him to come on my show. So if I do him a solid, I click on this, this shoe business his buddy has, take a look, let him know that I did him a favor. Then I'll follow it up and be like, yeah, man, sick shoe business. Uh, you want to come on my show, by the way. That was the plan, right? So I clicked on the link. Bingo, bango, bo- like immediate. It was like a like the the fucking uh, Indiana Jones of just like the like as soon as the switch happened, I just got like blocked out. Um, and then I just started laughing my ass off. I was like sitting in my apartment just cackling. I was like, "What the fuck just happened?" Uh, so I told that story on the show. Um, it was funny. I got a big laugh out of it. I learned my lesson from that, TJ, which is that you're supposed to set up the two factor authentication where if, if someone else is signing into your account from a non-trusted device, they text you a code, you type that code in and now you, it's a trusted device, right? I did not have that set up because when I set up my Twitter account, the technology did not exist. I set up my Twitter account in like 2008. Maybe it did, but it was like, I don't know. I, it was a set it and forget it situation in 2008. So I, I said it, did not care, never thought to check it. I got hacked. It happened. I learned my lesson. I went in. I did the two-factor bullshit. Fast forward to this weekend. Now, I'm I'm taking – I am the hardest working man in show business, as you know, TJ. Uh, every so often, I, I think to myself, I need to, I, need to, I need to take care of myself. I need to take care of my mentals. This weekend, I was like, I got to get away to uh, – my buddy has a lake house in Michigan. So I – I, I accepted his invitation and I drove over to Michigan. We went to the lake house. I spent the whole weekend, like basically off my phone. Like I, I, it wasn't complete wilderness, but the service was shit. The, I, I just wasn't, you know, I'm like out on the boat. I'm doing, I'm doing shit. Like I wasn't on my phone really at all this weekend. Um, I come back home Sunday to find that the neighborhood that I just moved into Roscoe village is having a street festival going on right right by my house, like like on the block, like to the point that I'm sitting in my living room and I hear all the music going on. So I'm like, I guess I'll just go to the festival. Like I, I'm just going to walk, you know, it's free to get into all that sort of thing. So I was like, I'll just walk over to the festival. There is an, uh, an ABBA cover, cover band playing at this festival. The, 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 the leotards and all. Um, I'm bopping to, to give me, give me, give me a man at the midnight. Da, da. And I'm just like, you know, I'm drinking my beer, like just bobbing to ABBA, which like, you know, as an aside, have way more hits than I realized until last night. And then, you know, like ABBA, I'm like, what, they sing Dancing Queen and what else is there? And then like every song that's coming up, I'm like, mm, mama mia, da, da. <laughs> you know, so I'm having a great time. It was a great weekend. Uh, little lake weekend, little ABBA cover band, little street festival in the neighborhood. A little welcome to Chicago type vibe with the street festival. Everything's good. And then all of a sudden my phone starts blowing up and they're like, dude, you've been hacked. What did you do? What did you click? You texted me. Uh, you throw me on a, on an email chain. That's all caps urgent. Big cat throws me on like a text chain with, uh, uh, I, I don't even know who at Barstool, like the, like, thank you to everybody who's been helping, but like, I can't even keep up with who shout out to people that are helping TJ. Please. Gaz, Tyler gold, Chuck Naso. There, it, it just felt like a whole team effort, which, by the way, as an aside, is freaking awesome. That, like, yeah. I will say, I, I do love that. That, like, Varstool, like, immediately had a protocol. It's like everyone busted out the book and, like, slapped it on the table. And, like, here's what we're going to do about this. Um, but the reason I, 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 I give all this backstory is to say that I truly have no idea what the hell happened. <laughs> I, I could not be more in the dark. I was just living my life. This was not a case of me trying to buy shoes. This was not, uh, no one sent me free MacBooks and I said, yeah, I'm going to click on this link, this suspicious link that someone has sent me. Um, there was no Nigerian prince. I, I, I'm not afraid to admit when I'm stupid, which is case in point telling the Kyle Guy story. Uh, this was not the case, which was in a, like, in some way I feel like happy because like, I, I'm not a moron and I'm, you know, I'm, I'm laying in bed last night and I'm like, I don't know what the fuck happened. Like, I'm not a. I'm just like looking in the mirror. I'm not old. I'm not old. <laughs> I'm not old. I'm not. Um, but then it's more frustrating because at least like the last time I was hacked, I'm like, ah, yep, that's exactly what it was. That's I, I see. I see my folly. Uh, but come to find out, TJ, I guess I got my two factor turned off. That that was the other thing is like I I was confused by because I was like I I set up the two factor shit. I never got a text that was like, here's your code. Type in your code if you're trying to sign in and you know and and wherever in the netherlands or wherever the hell this hackers is living um i never got that code 
So I was just confused by the whole thing. And then uh, one of the one of the people at Barstool, I think it was Tyler, was like, yeah, Elon turned all that shit off. And I was like, oh, that's sick, man. Sick league. That's, that's yeah. fucking awesome. <laughs> that's sweet. So I, I the only the only thing I can think is like, you know, I shouldn't have made my password password. I probably should have right. made it stronger. But there's probably my inst for what it's worth. My Instagram got hacked, too. But like somehow I still had access to it and I immediately got into it and like kicked that guy's email off. And then like changed my password and I, I sort of fixed it. Um, but yeah, I, 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 I think it's time to take me out the pasture and just shoot me. Cause I, I have no idea what the hell happened and it's going to happen again is what I'm saying. Like I, I learned the first time I learned lessons and changed my behavior. This time I learned zero lessons. I have no idea. I have no idea what the takeaway is or what I should do differently. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm starting to lean on, on Rico's side and think that this is some sort of witch hunt by the uh, little league world series umpire crew <laughs> to, to, to kick us out of the, uh, the media cycle or suppress, suppress Rico's takes. Yeah. But uh, you know, that's such as such as life as a one time uh, credit card scam victim. I, 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 I'm with you there. It's, it's no fun to not know you, what you be, did wrong. Be honest. Do you think I'm a moron? Did you, were there were there conversations had behind my back where it's no, like, no, no, this no. fucking it's, new hire at Barstool yeah. can't yeah, even... Brandon, Brandon just texted me a video of him like crying, laughing. It was a two-minute long video. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Um, but Because he's the biggest idiot we have. But I don't know. Yeah, it's it sucks. I, I would imagine that there's some sort of scam going on that you somehow fell victim to. I hope it wasn't something nefarious. Like, we've had people get fake fake messages from like hey it's erica the ceo of barstool please do this for me and give me fifty dollars <laughs> I'm, I'm hoping it wasn't something like that but i don't i, don't, I don't, No, i gave i gave zero dollars i that's yeah. what i mean like it wasn't i wasn't active in this at all it was i was just living if, if people weren't texting me i would have never known i would have yeah. just i probably i i might have figured it out this morning i have my morning coffee i maybe would have tried to get on twitter and not been able to but uh yeah i i i, I was i couldn't be more clueless as to what happened but that, yeah, again, that's like messing with my head because I'm like, well, damn, that means it's just gonna happen again. Though, like right. my the, my theory is just that I I I probably use the same password on a little too many things. So like, uh, there could have been like a data breach and like something else, mm. and then mm. they, yeah, you know what I mean, like some other my Lulu Lemon Rewards account, <laughs> right? I use the same password on that as I use on Twitter. So then they like hack that and use. I don't know. Because I was trying to figure out, because I do have, um, by the way, the same thing with the Instagram. I didn't have my two-factor set up for that because I set up my Instagram in like 2008 and did not touch it since. And then, you know, I learned my lesson and turned that on. But uh, yeah, I, that's the only thing I can think. But, you know, maybe that's a boring story. But I just want to defend my honor here because I, I, I'm i getting of that age where when it happens to you twice, I, I, I know what I would be saying if I was observing someone else. Yeah. Um, fool me once, shame on yeah, you. Yeah, fool that's, me twice, can't get fooled again. Yeah, that's exactly right. That's exactly right. Um, shout out, but, shout, uh, like you said though, shout out to the people that that caught it because I was getting my like Twitter DM or Twitter notifications blown up. Like, yo, come get your boy, basically. Come get your boy. Yeah, yeah. That's that's the worst part. I I, I texted Dan and I was like, dude, honest to God, because he's like, we're on it, we're gonna take care of it, whatever. And I was like, thank you, I appreciate it, and I really, really do. But honest to God. I care way less about the actual hacking and way more about people thinking I'm a moron. <laughs> yeah. Like if, 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 if this happened and everybody, you know, treated me like the victim I am here, TJ, and everybody yeah. like was texting me thoughts and prayers and is there anything I can do to help? Um, I don't think I would care that much, but instead I'm just getting ripped to shreds by people yeah. that I thought were my friends. And, uh, <laughs> this is funny to you. Is this funny to you that yeah. I'm hacked? Well, guess who's not getting a MacBook for six hundred dollars, bitch? I'm not selling one to you now. You know, I'm gonna I'm gonna keep these for myself. So deals off. I will say, when I first saw it, I had to like quickly do a Twitter search of like <laughs> Ohio State and then Indiana, like recruiting news. I was like, maybe he's doing like the big cat bit where he tweets oh, out like, "Hello, yeah. Twitter family, I have a PS5. I'm keeping the Xbox." But like. Uh, so I quickly searched to make sure that nothing drastic had happened in your sports fandom life <laughs> yeah. before I reached out and was like, hey, what the fuck? <laughs> but that, that like makes it worse because yeah. it's far more plausible to you that I'm doing a bit of some sort. That, like the last thing that people would think is that I'm that stupid. And then right. when you find out that I am that stupid, I get ripped to shreds. Meanwhile, I'm just trying to – I'm just like dancing queen. <laughs> you know? And I got everyone like, what did you do? And I'm like, what did I do? I, yeah. I was just – Hammering some beers, just chilling. <laughs> <Watching it. laughs> 
did I chill too hard? Is that yeah. what I did? I don't know. Maybe. Um, and I walk into I walk into the the office today to do the show, and I see Fasuli. Uh, uh, Fazoli. I, I always, I always call him by his Twitter name because I every time I say Fazoli, it doesn't sound right. I think of the the restaurant mm-hmm. with the uh, with the breadsticks. Um, so I always, and, and every time I see him on Twitter, it's, it's Fastuli, right? That's his Twitter name. Yeah, I got I got to work on that because I call him Fastuli. But uh, uh, Fazoli, as soon as I walk in, he just smiles at me and he's like, "You got any MacBook Pros for me?" And I was like. <laughs> You know what? <laughs> Nothing gets by that guy. <laughs> there's a budding rivalry here, TJ, because yeah. you know we had the well, we had the Mincy situation where he told me right. I couldn't wear the Mincy shirt, and then I was like, you know, so I don't, I don't know. But I, I'm his manager, I mean. so if you need me to to, to fire put him, him in timeout, fire him, fire him, just fire I, him. I can do that. Fire him, please. No, um, <laughs> that's the worst part. Is just like just the smarmy look on everyone's face, you know, and you have to you have to face the music, and it's like. I was chilling. That was all I did. All I did was chill. Um, but I'm the asshole, I guess. So I got to wear this. I was hacked, and it might happen again. I might, it might. You know, yeah. like that's that's the thing. I'm not. I'm sure as shit. Not paying for Twitter Blue or whatever the Elon's calling it to to set up my two factor. I'm sure as shit. Not doing that. Um, I'm not changing any of my behavior. So. Right. <laughs> and guess what? I'm probably gonna chill on a lake at some point in the future. So. Just don't chill too hard. You know, it might happen again. Um, what else? Oh, uh, winning time episode two, uh, for those of you who, who have tuned in and endured the little league world series talk and my, uh, boring ass story about being hacked on Twitter. Uh, and you're like, all this is great. Titus get to the, I need the tightest cut of, of winning time episode two, season two, episode two. It's with a heavy heart that I say that a uh, Kurt Rambis made, made no appearances in episode two. There was no Rambis in episode two. And now people are, people are talking, um, did they cut the part out completely? Is there going to be any Rambus in this season? Did they did they sh- did they pick a guy for Rambus, shoot the season, look back on the footage and say, "I'll be damned, this guy is not a this guy is is not Rambus material." I wish we would have cast Titus. That's it's hard to say right now. I don't know. We'll we'll learn more as as the story develops, but that's where we're at right now. TJ, a whole episode. There's only like 7 episodes in this season. Kurt Rambis was not in episode two whatsoever, um, so I can't give you a Titus cut. There's nothing to be. There's, yeah. There's no action. Maybe to be done. maybe here's a theory. Did HBO see your impression on our last episode <laughs> and say we got to stop this guy from making our yes. show look so bad because we missed out on hiring him? Let's suppress his personal platform and go in through Twitter and hack suspend his- him that and hack his Twitter. <laughs> That way he can he can't keep making us look he bad for keep, not hiring yeah. him in the first place. This makes H- this almost HBO makes has a lot sense. of money. That 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 kind of makes too much sense to me. That almost makes too much sense. Um, but yeah, I I don't know. We'll see episode three. Uh, I imagine we'll get some Rambus at some point. Like I said, they they did in the trailer. Rambus does get clotheslined by Kevin McHale. Uh, so. I imagine we'll see that at some point this season. In which case, I'm really excited to try to act that out in this studio. Just get yep. decked by the poker table, I guess. We'll call Brandon. We'll just have Brandon drive in to the studio just for that day. Just to yep. like I need you to do an hour and a half one way commute just to clothesline me on my own show. You wouldn't even have to yeah, as you say clothesline me and he's already would, in his yeah, car. I wouldn't finish the sentence and yeah, he's already yeah. on his way. Um by, oh, by the way, for, speak- this is for video? I thought this <laughs> was just for fun. Speaking of Brandon in his car, uh what is this blindside story that I, I care way less about the story to be completely honest with you. And I care yeah. way more about Brandon um, and his sob story of getting in a car wreck, which like I, I took hook line. When I saw Brandon at the bowling alley for the first time, yeah. after I heard about his car wreck, it was weird, dude. Cause like the vibes are, I was like, I just, I kind of put my hand on it. Like the first thing I said is like, how are you buddy? Like, I like, man, I'm sorry. Like I tried to have like a serious moment with them and you know, like that wore off after like, 30 seconds and we were yeah. back but like there was like the initial like dude that's like some real life shit i'm so sorry but then i i see today definitely not on twitter because i had my twitter hacked but on instagram i see uh a tiktok of brandon driving in his car <laughs> just going on an unhinged rant about the blindside guy uh and i'm thinking to myself like if you like the way you were talking is like you'll you'll never be able to get behind the wheel again without like having tremors and being fearful and this motherfucker's got a seatbelt on like screaming i told you about the the blind side sandra bullock's full of shit and i'm like <laughs> like what, what what's going on here i mean right there's a couple takes that brandon holds on to 
as close to his uh, the chest as possible and the blind side being full of shit is one of those and i've spent a lot of time around him and heard him respond to a lot of people that like the blind side i don't think he might be more passionate about that than he is about college football as a whole so for this to finally come to light as like a Brandon was right moment, I'm not surprised that he forgot that he's afraid of driving now to get. To, he, he was to, so he, yeah, he was on cloud nine. He yes. was just yeah, it didn't even cross his mind. That he has he, been screaming this to nobody, like into the clouds. Old man yells at cloud. Yeah, that the blind side is a farce and a fa- a fake story and a fake movie. He's talked to Michael Orr about this <laughs> at least once in a DM conversation. And for it to finally come to light, I can't even imagine how happy he was when that hit the news cycle today. I I couldn't even watch the video for the content he was trying to make. Like I couldn't even process what he. All I was doing was just locked in on like, is this motherfucker driving his car after he told everybody? Like I I don't know if I'll ever really be able to drive again without that fear. You're driving a car, shooting a TikTok. <laughs> what is, what is we have a we have, there's an epidemic in this country of people shooting shit in their car. Like yeah. I don't understand. It seems to play is. into the algorithm, believe it, it does. or not, where like car videos seem to do better than house videos for some reason. I know I'm getting old because I have reached the point where like every time I see someone driving the car, like I just want to comment like, great video, pull over your car before you <laughs> shoot this video. Like we don't need you on the road. I I think there's like an element of like people think they're cool too. It's like you put yeah. one hand on the wheel and you kind of flick your nose as you're talking. You're like, look, look, I'm, let me let me say something to you. I think this Georgia pass rush, all right? So here's the deal. I think it might be one of the best in the country. And you're just like flicking your nose and looking at the road. And it's like, who? That, that drive, or drive eating your in car. the car. Yeah, I yeah, know. Food reviews yeah. in the driver's seat. I don't get it. I don't get it. But, uh, yeah, I, I congrats to Brandon on being right about that. Like, I got I to gotta read up on this story, though. Like, basically, Michael Orr is now saying, what, that, that, what, what what is bullshit? Like he wasn't actually adopted wasn't by adopted. these people. So what was he? He was it was a conservatorship. So what they like kidnapped him? Legally, <laughs> they like claimed kid. him basically. Like they claimed the like decision making power over him and made money off of him through this movie. But he was never like a part of the family. Essentially, he was just a guy that lived with them. Yeah, the real this is the real family. Like the the story yeah. adaptation has its own faults. Like they didn't find him. He he had had a bedroom before that. the 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 big line for the movie I've never had one of these before. What a bedroom to yourself? No, a bed. Like that's a not bed. real. Yeah, that's just... like one of Brandon's main gripes. It's like yeah, the five star offensive lineman had a bed. Before Wait a second. He was... So Hollywood took yeah. liberties. Wait. And just like made something a little more dramatic. Yes, yes. yes. So Damn, not only dude. is the fake story fake, but the real wow. story is also fake. Wow. Damn, it's fake. It's all, also it's Finding all Nemo fake. is not real either. Those, it's all those, fake. That's, those are animated fish. Can't wait for Brandon's next TikTok to be, you know, SummerSlam reactions. <laughs> <laughs> the the movie, the Hollywood movie. Sandra Bullock did not adopt yeah. Michael Orr. Okay. Meanwhile, at SummerSlam, here's where I thought about <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy Uso turning on his Jimmy brother. Jimmy Uso turned. <laughs> uh, well, that's 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 interesting. I guess. Yeah, I don't know. I got. I'll, I'll read up on it and, and report back. But I, I couldn't get past Brandon making his TikTok in his car when he was supposedly scared of driving. Uh, what else? Any other shout outs? Uh, the Big Ten is looking at Allegiant Stadium for the Big Ten football championship in Las Vegas instead of Indianapolis, where it's been played for the last decade plus. Yeah. Your thoughts as a Midwesterner? Um, listen, I I'm an I'm an Indy native, uh, so I, I I I love when events are in Indy because I can you know it's it's very familiar to me. But uh, I think Indianapolis is the greatest host city. I mean Vegas is good, I guess too. But like Vegas, like that doesn't make any sense. I I hate when things get moved from Indy. I do because I think Indy is so good at uh, not having anything else going on. <laughs> That's Indy's best quality. Indianapolis is the perfect size city to host it because uh, it is a big enough city to have everything you need. Kind of what we were talking about with Nick and KB about Columbus. Uh, they're very similar cities. They're basically like, in, in my mind, they're sister cities. They feel very, very similar. It's just Indy has the Pacers and Colts and Columbus has the Buckeyes and Blue Jackets and my beloved Columbus crew. Uh, but Indy is a city that has... The right, just enough to 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 host all these big events: Super Bowl, Final Four, Big Ten Championship, all that. 
Um, but then not so much to where something else is going on. You know, like you do this in Los Angeles, you have the Big Ten Championship and and SoFi. That night, Drake's having a concert at Staples, or you know, John Mayer's playing at the Hollywood Bowl, or you know, whatever the hell is going on. There's just so much shit going on that like the city doesn't shut down for it. Indianapolis is the type of city when the Final Four rolls through, everybody shuts down. You you get off the plane at the airport and the signs are up and they're welcoming it. So I I hate that they're moving it. I hate that it's in Vegas, which isn't even a a Big Ten market. There's zero Big Ten teams in Nevada. Um, but at the same time, like that's that's like if I'm making a, gr- a list of gripes about conference realignment, that's very very far at the bottom of my list of gripes. So like at this point, you've already you've already got this far. You might as well just throw take a cherry it all, on top of the shit. Take it all from us. Yeah, just take it all from me. Yeah, I'm I'm already a broken man. <laughs> yeah, you you can't do anymore. Um, Team USA looks good. I want to shout them out. Team USA looks really good. I'm I'm excited about this World Cup. Um, beat Slovenia without without Luca, but uh Spain was Spain was was a little closer. But I, I I I like I said last time, like I I I don't think this is our best team or anything close to it. But uh I think they're I love Jalen Brunson as a team USA point guard. He's freaking awesome. I love uh Anthony Edwards just seems to be the star of this team. Um I know they're tune ups. I know they don't actually count for anything. I'm just trying to get a read on what to expect. And I do as of right now, TJ. I expect us to win the whole thing. And, of course, we should because we're USA and it's basketball. But, honestly, some of the roster constructions and all that kind of thing, there is a world where, like, we could enter a World Cup where I would say, I honestly don't think we're going to win. I do expect to win. So, uh, we'll see. I don't know. I don't know. I'll wait till the real thing starts. But I, I'm way more optimistic after after we took care of business against Slovenia. and Because uh, I think we're playing well. We're, the, the guys are just fun. And, like, the, there's such a balance to the team that makes it really fun. Uh, I just I, I wonder if we have enough star power to get over the hump. But Jalen Brunson is a perfect, is an absolutely perfect Team USA point guard to the point that if you could even put together the best possible team of talent, I think I would still want Jalen Brunson on that team. Like if you're if every if every single basketball player in this country is like I want to play for Team USA, I still think you invite Jalen Brunson to be on the team. I would want him on the team. So I'm excited about it. Um, what else? What else? What else? I Cooper think that Flag reclassified. So Rutgers oh yeah, is, yeah. Get Cooper Flag, now. dude. Thoughts and prayers to Rutgers. You don't have the, you're not going to get the number one recruit anymore. Sad. Damn, dude. That's tough. So that, I guess we're just not going to talk about Rutgers on this show then. Yeah, no reason to. Fuck. <laughs> Damn, there that goes. <laughs> it was fun while it lasted. Oh, uh, one more shout-out for me. A, a serious shout-out. The uh, the people of Lahaina, um, the island of Maui, this fire is like the most devastating, sad. Uh, it's, just, it's just like heartbreaking. There's no other way around it. Uh, the, 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 the stories that are coming out from this, the, the footage when it was happening – um, it's, it's, it's absolutely devastating. And, uh, obviously I, I know of Lahaina and I view Lahaina through the lens of the Maui Invitational and the Lahaina Civic Center. And, um, you know, that's my introduction to that community and, and all of that. But, uh, in the number of times I've gone to Maui and gone to Lahaina, um, I, I, I love the Maui Invitational more than anything in basketball. I like, honest to God, like the more I think about it, the more I'm like, I, I, I might like going to the Maui Invitation I more than the Final Four. I think I, I enjoy going to Maui, uh, and it's not because of, uh, you know, I, I want to go to some exotic location or anything else. It's because, yes, the basketball is awesome, but the town of Lahaina, which is now, my understanding, is just like ash and rubble, and there are a, a lot of people have, have died in this thing, and they still don't really fully know the the whole extent of the, the, the damage and the casualties and all that. Um, the town of Lahaina was so freaking cool and the people were so awesome. And that was like kind of the un I wouldn't say unheralded, but that was like the, the undercurrent. Like if you ever go to the Maui Invitational and, and, and experienced it, um, your takeaways were the basketball is incredible. The gym's incredible. Uh, you know, like, like being able to snorkel at your hotel, like all the things that make Maui like such a, a, a tourist spot and like paradise. Those are all the things you would hit. But then when you go back home, I, I I think you would tell people, you'd be like, what really blew me away, though, like the surprise, like I definitely did not see this coming, was the town of Lahaina is like a cool little, they have like the street with the cool little bars and the shops, and the people are just so freaking nice. Um, that community is just so cool in a way that like, the, you have this group of people that are living on paradise, and I'm a hater by nature, TJ, as you know, I've been done this show with me long enough that... Um, 
when I went the first time I went there, my instinct was to be like, I hate all of you because you have a life that I would, I would do anything to have, but they just like beat you over the head with kindness. And, and, and you just like, they just win you over with how, how just it, 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 it I don't know how else to describe it. It's just like, I should hate you. I should be jealous of you, but the, the, they're so welcoming to uh, uh, the tourism industry, which like, there's a lot of conversations about like, you know, do the people of Hawaii, like, I'm not going to speak for the people of Hawaii, but like, I imagine there's a big tug of war of like, do we like tourists? Cause they bring a lot of money, but also they, you know, they don't always respect the culture and all this. I never once when every all I've been to Maui, I think five times in my life now, I've never once felt like I was, uh, when I would go into that the, the town and and talk to locals and all that sort of, thing, I never once felt like I wasn't welcome. I never once felt like, um, you know, take your white ass back to where you came from, get back. You know, like this was never. They're just like it, it's like the coolest community of people, and uh, my heart aches for them. And and I really truly, uh, you know, I I don't want to make it about the basketball, but like that is the lens through which I was introduced to Maui and Lahaina. So it's like kind of hard to. You know, as, as I like sat there and thought about it, I'm like, God damn, that's the, that was just my, my experience with Lahaina was the Maui Invitational. So like just kind of sitting there thinking about all the spots that I would go during, um, in between games when you're not at the gym and, uh, all the, it, it was just heartbreaking. It, it, there's no other way to describe it. And, um, I, I, I don't know. So I don't, I don't know if they're going to play it this year. I don't know if they should. I mean, there's arguments for both sides as to, uh, you know, you, you absolutely cannot. It's insensitive, and it's you know we got to focus on what matters most. And then, I don't know. Other people might argue that like you need to pick me up, and the people need something, or maybe you need the tourism dollars. I it's not for me to decide. I I have no opinion one way or another. I just wanted to to you know. I, I know at this point thoughts and prayers are trite, and nobody wants to hear that shit. And um, but you know, as I sit here in this in my studio in Chicago, uh. I don't know what else to do, TJ, but just say that like, I'm thinking of everybody in Lahaina and I, uh, it, it, it's a place that I fell in love with immediately. And it's not just because, you know, I could like slam pina coladas and go snorkeling. It was like the, the people were so fucking cool. That's that street, the, the, uh, like the main drag that's, that's been wiped out was, uh, it, it was so good at like being a tourist place without like being cheesy and just full of like nonsense tchotchke everywhere. And, you know, tacky bars and all that shit. Um, it just had like the perfect balance, man. It was like my favorite place. Like I stayed, I've gone to Maui and stayed in uh, Walea down there at the 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 Grand Walea. Um, I think Odin, Greg Odin's wedding was down there, and I then when I stayed down there and like, you know, the room's freaking nice and it's really beautiful down. But like I, every time I go to Maui, whether I'm going for the uh, the Maui invitation or not, I want to go to Lahaina. I wanted to stay in Lahaina. Lahaina was the coolest part to me because it was like. It just had the right mix. It had the it, it felt it felt like a real town and not like a you know a resort. But then it also like I said, it wasn't like this like, um, it wasn't just like a, a a bunch of bullshit that you're trying to sell people, sell to to tourists. It, it just it just fit it, it fit it fit for what I was after when I go to Hawaii. And uh, I'm heartbroken for the people, and uh, I don't. I don't, I don't know what else to say, but I, I'm, I'm thinking about, if, you know, not that it fucking matters, but if anybody's, <laughs> I, if, if you don't know about this, by the way, if you're someone watching and you're like, well, I don't know what he's talking about, but I, I imagine most people do. Um, yeah, look it up. It's, it's, it's like one of the worst wildfires I've ever seen. And, and it hits like super close to home to me because of, uh, the Colorado fire a couple years ago, which I was in Boulder was, that was all breaking out. And my girlfriend, her whole family lives in Boulder and, uh, you know, her best friends and their family all lost their house. And they're still like, you know, that community, it's been like a couple of years and they're still like trying to put the pieces back together. And, and the, just, just seeing kind of how like something like that can, can, can really fuck a community up uh, emotionally. It, it, it just, it, it sucks. And that's, I don't know. I'm not good at this stuff, but, uh, I, I wanted to, I wanted to make a point to say that because Lahaina is one of my favorite places on earth. And, uh, I look forward to helping out any way I can financially or otherwise. Uh, I'm going to, I'm, I'm waiting to sort of suss out like where you're supposed to donate stuff and all that sort of thing. But, uh, I don't know. That's, that's, it's, it's absolutely heartbreaking. And that's all I have to say about that. So I guess we can end the show now. Um, <laughs> on, on, on that note. Um, oh, I'll, 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 I'll end the, I'll end the show on this note. Uh, Thursday is my favorite episode of any podcast I've ever done ever 
um that includes me being a guest on on some fun shows and me not be you know me host whatever it was it was the most it's my favorite podcast I've ever done. So there's a little teaser, uh, more of a teaser. I squashed the beef with Rico. Maybe you could, maybe there's a theme to this week's, uh, episodes of, uh, podcast. Cause, uh, it's, it's, it's beef squashing week here on the Mark Titus show because, uh, Thursday is a, a very, very fun interview that, uh, I think people will really enjoy. So, um, I'll just leave it at that. It's, it's a very special guest and we had a ton of fun doing the show and I'm fired up for, for this to come out because, uh, it's it's been a long time in the making and uh i think i've, I've teased it enough but uh you'll want to listen to thursday's show we'll just leave it at that it's my favorite show i've ever done thank you guys for listening through uh through rico and i talking about 12 year olds playing baseball for the record curacao is going to win this thing um and yeah thank you to everybody watching on youtube thank you to everybody who uh thank you to uh any of the anus fans by the way that stuck around the four of you who watched, uh, the show with, uh, Nick and KB and you know, that was your introduction to me. And you're like, maybe I'll watch more of his stuff more likely than not. You're just like, yeah, I'll, I'll watch when Nick and KB are back on, <laughs> but there's probably four of you that are, are, are sticking around. And I appreciate that. But yeah, that did numbies TJ. It did numbies. The Nick, Nicky clicky method never fails. Nicky clicky does numbies, you know? So I, Sorry, Rico, but I think I found my second chair last week. I think I'm going to get Nikki Kalicki to sit down and uh, <laughs> help boost the pod. Uh, yeah, in the, be, yeah, if he just sits in the corner, put him in the thumbnail, and you got yeah, extra just put, clicks. Yeah. Um, watch the show Thursday. Watch the show, by the way. I, th- I think I think Thursday's a good show to watch. I think you want to watch the show Thursday. Uh, if you're someone who listens to the podcast, uh, you should you could still listen. I don't, I don't mean to say you're. there's no wrong answer, but I think Thursday's a good one to watch. Uh, it was in studio, and it was a ton of fun. Like I said, I don't I don't say it lightly. It was my my favorite podcast I've ever done in my life. So um, if you like me and you like this show, and I'm sure you do because that's why you're listening or watching, uh, you're going to want to watch Thursday. I'll just leave it at that. Until then, see you guys.